Welcome to the Dialga V Star podcast featuring <laughs> Jake and Sean, our winner, Andrew Hedrick of the Indianapolis Regional. Spoiler alert winning with Dialga V Star. I posted it in the Discord for anyone who uh, yeah. wants to see the deck list. We won't spend too much time on it um, just because we're going to get down to our set review episode today. But just wanted to let you know that today, or well, yesterday was my favorite day of the week because of Dial V Star. Sean, how are you? I'm good. I'm good. I watched that match and uh, boy, howdy. Grant Chen put up a good, he put up a good fight. I think it's a really tough match. Mm -hmm. For Chen Pao, because it's just, it's so, and Grant had some really awkward hands, but like, generally speaking, like, all Dialga needs is two energy to knock out a Chen Pao. <laughs> it's just so easy. And yeah. once they get a Star Kronos off, it's just kind of like, gosh, how do you, how do you take enough prizes? If they swing with Zamazenta too, then you got like a weird prize map compared. It's aw It's awkward, man. It's an awkward match. It was really interesting, though, how well chin pow did i remember late in the tournament i don't know exactly when but i remember seeing a picture from chip richie on twitter um saying like out of the eight top tables there are six chin pow at the top tables well, and so there were, and there were four in the top eight yeah so even then like chin pow was really really good and has really just gotten a boost overall um leading into indianapolis really really cool but i do know that charizard was the most popular deck yeah. in the event i think it was about the same percentage as when we talked about the other week that um, about sense. like 20 percent. yeah but i mean i think we might have talked about it last week too of like i don't know if we predicted chen pao would do well maybe you did i don't know but we did talk about how chen pao like with so many Charizards, Chen Pao has a good matchup because it can do those big knockouts immediately. Mm -hmm. Charizard struggles to take a knockout on Chen Pao early. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it was a good call. It was a good meta call. Like, hey, if there's going to be that much Charizard um, and you feel good about piloting Chen Pao and like, you know, the other counters to Charizard are also two prize decks like RCS V-Star and Giratina or Lost Zone Giratina. Like, I feel pretty good in that situation and the great thing is is that dialga is weak to fire which means that dark type terra charizard isn't <laughs> hitting for weakness on there uh, if you want i did see this earlier there's like a current buyout on tcg player for dialga v stars if you want to jump on the train of dialga v star we welcome you uh, but just remember also, don't buy the regular arts unless you really, really want the regular arts. Both the V-Star and the V have uh, different promos, which are cheaper options if you want to get into the deck just to make it a little bit cheaper. But that's not nice. that's not the that's not all what we're talking about today. Sean, we got plenty to talk about with the set review. Again, we did have uh, we have a new Discord server for anyone who doesn't know. Link is in the description down below. It's been a lot of fun so far. Everybody's been really cool. We have uh, kind of like a question section of the Discord, and a lot of you are asking about new set questions. So yep. we're like, oh, we should do a we should do a set review uh, so that we can get to a lot of these uh, new set questions. Yep. And I will say, like, some of the questions are about meta decks, like deck analysis, archetypes. And mm -hmm. uh, this is our initial set review. Like, I don't know about Jake, but for me, I haven't really looked into the new set. So we might cover some of those que questions when we talk about, like, a meta prediction thing for NAIC. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, we'll see what we get to today. But, Jake, are you ready to find out what Twilight Masquerade has in store yeah. for us? Yes, and I've I've had a little bit of Twilight Masquerade uh, experience because I did watch a bit of the Sapporo Champions League okay. over in Japan that happened uh, kind of like over the weekend, um, yeah. I think it was. It was between last episode and this episode. Um, the results are not on Limitless yet, but... Um, but I did watch that and I I plan on actually watching it again before, you know, we really dive into to things over there. But yes, I'm ready for Twilight. That was my long way of saying I'm ready for Twilight Masquerade. <laughs> um, cool beans. Well, I, you know, 
I guess I'll start from the top like we normally do. We'll also tell you which cards you can get in the pre-release promo, which mm-hmm. pre-releases start this weekend. So yeah, I was going to say they have to be like really soon, right? Yeah, that's why I want to do the set review now because pre-releases are starting this weekend. So hopefully after this, you'll understand like what you should be looking to pull or when you do pull something, if it's good, if it's bad, if it's interesting, whatever. Right. So, mm-hmm. yeah, um, I think just starting off, I, I don't really see anything in the initial. Like, I don't think the Tang growth is particularly interesting. I think the first one that you could talk about is the Aria dose. The Aria uh, okay. although I think the grass type Pokemon are definitely at the beginning, like, oh, keep scrolling, you know. Uh, the Aria is a stage one from Spinarak grass type Pokemon. This is 90 HP. So if level ball comes back, you know, <laughs> level ball. I feel <laughs> like I, I really like immediately want to be like, it's level ballable because we said that so many times, but level ball. Yeah. Anyways, 90 HP grass type stage one Pokemon has an ability called Big Net. Your opponent's active evolution Pokemon's retreat cost is colorless more. So especially with like no switches in the format, things like that, this kind of prevention effect from switching could be interesting, uh, especially because we talked about the other raising retreat cost options in oh my gosh what's that pokemon's name uh it's it's like a a buck type no 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 no. oh my gosh i'm forgetting i have a whole play set of these and i was ready to play it uh you play with leafy on v max um i I, I remember the deck you're talking about yeah i remember the spadops spadops that's who it is anyways spadops 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 ex is worth two prize cards so having a one prize card option uh can be really really nice overall and then the attack just for one grass energy 10 plus damage 30 more damage for each cost in your opponent's active pokemon's retreat cost so against what what can this do against charizard if it's three against charizard maybe you only have one big net ability and it's the little guy attacking that would be 90 100 200 damage for one energy i mean i don't think that this gets played in a deck that you actually attack i I think this is a straight up stall no yeah if if you're if you're playing this in an if you're playing this attacking uh times are tough (laughs) yeah 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 i mean yeah so i think i think this is an interesting card though because to your point right the problem with spied ops is it's a good control card but because it gives up two prizes all your opponent needs is maybe like three good turns and then you Mm -hmm. lose but with this, you could throw this out there. You can play other cards that are really annoying, like Mimic you, um, mm-hmm. to stall your opponent out, or you know whatever. There's other cards, but I don't know. I, I could see I could see a world. Maybe it's not good enough because it's a stage one, but I could see a world where this gets played in some sort of a new version of Pidgeot EX control, right? Where you're mm-hmm. playing Airy, you're getting rid of cards from your opponent's hand, you're you know getting rid of all those switching options so maybe 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 you're like great tusk milling them after this or like you know chi you milling them while this is on the bench it's cool pidgeot is on the rise as we've talked about the last couple weeks in this format i do know that grant manley azul and uh caleb getimer all played pidgeot control into indianapolis grant manley got top four and then I think Azul got top 16 and Caleb got top 32. So if those guys are back on control, you know that control is back, in my opinion. Sean, let's go. (laughs) Yeah. So the next one I want to talk about, Jake, is this Sunflora. Mm -hmm. So this Sunflora is a stage one, uh, 100 HP, but it has a single grass attack, sunshine return, 60 times damage. This attack does 60 damage for each fire energy attached to all of your pokemon now i wanted to point this out because we do have a couple of really good fire energy accelerators in the format we mm-hmm. have magma is magma basin still legal i think it is right yeah magma basin yeah. still legal yeah, yeah yeah so you do have magma basin you obviously have charizard ex which you can put a bunch mm-hmm. of fire energy into play three for each time you evolve and you also have mila nobody really plays mila all that much but i think if you wanted to i think sunflora it's interesting. Sunflora, in my mind, Jake, acts like a similar strategy to Lugia and Mincino or Chinchino, right? 
where yeah. the amount of energy you can like pile on really quick with the Archeops ability is similar to the amount of energy you can pile on by evolving a Charizard and then maybe Mila and, and whatever, right? Um, I don't know. I think the Sunflora has a chance in this format. I really do. Speaking on Mila, and we can talk about it more next week uh, about the Champions League, I think Mila was actually played a little bit more in the Japan Champions League, the future format. So if you're looking to maybe buy a full art supporter for your decks real cheap, maybe you want to jump on that now um, before it gets too high and more playable. Jake, what's the next grass Pokemon that caught your eye? We're going to talk about the Thwacky and the th and the Thwacky and the Thwacky. Wow, that was <laughs> kind of like a tongue twister. Is one of the pre-release promos coming up in Twilight Masquerade. It has the ability Boom Boom Drum. Once during your turn, if your active Pokemon has the Festival Lead ability, you may search your deck for a card and put it in your hand, then shuffle your deck. Festival lead ability. What? There's there's several Pokemon that have the festival lead ability. I see two, three, three Pokemon in this set have that ability. If I hit Control F, hmm, interesting. Mm -hmm. I mean, but none of them are grass Pokemon. <laughs> or wait, no, one of them is a grass Pokemon. I mean, I will say being able to search your deck every single turn for any card and all you need is mm -hmm. for your active to have the festival lead ability. Like, I I don't know, like, do any of the festival lead, lead cards, um, like, what's the retreat cost on those bad boys? Because I just think of that, like, if you can turn one of those into a pivot Pokemon, then then that's like a forest seal stone every turn on your pivot Pokemon. Just wow, that's amazing. They're either a cost of two or one. So no free retreaters, but we do have that uh, skateboard yep. in format right now, rescue which board. yeah, rescue board, which I think it'll be really interesting. I'm curious to see how the um, how the pre-releases are built, right? Because if the wacky right here with the boom, boom drum ability is in here, you could get like a Rillaboom evolution line right with the thwackies in them and then in that same kit get the other three pokemon mm. that uh have the festival lead ability or at least uh one of them because one of one of the pokemon Driplin or diplin is a stage one the other is goldine and the other is swirlix so two basics and one stage one that have that ability so it would be interesting if they built the pre-release kits to have like the Rillaboom evolution line and then some of those Pokemon in there along with the rescue board, yeah. uh, maybe like one or two copies of it um, just for like you said, you know, it's a really strong ability to just grab whatever card, especially if you have a pivot Pokemon. So I'd be curious to see what they do in there. Yeah, I, I mean... It does feel like if they I almost don't want them to give a rescue board in that kit. I know why they would do it, because it teaches players that this is a cool strategy, mm -hmm. but it would feel too strong. Like, imagine if you're playing against somebody that has that kit and like every turn they get a free because like in pre-release, you very rarely have a lot of retreating cards, right? Like you don't get a lot of switches. So you just kind of you kind of left to your devices. And oh, that would be that would be nasty, Jake. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um. But uh, I think you mentioned a card. The next card that I want to talk about is that Diplin, right? Mm -hmm. So, like, what is the Festival Lead ability? What does it do? So, Diplin has the ability Festival Lead. If Festival Grounds is in play, this Pokemon may use any attack it has twice. The first attack, if the first attack knocks out your opponent's active Pokemon, you may attack again after your opponent chooses a new active Pokemon. Um, so I guess you get to use it twice no matter what, but it it has that additional text that like if the first time knocks it out, your opponent has to pick a new Pokemon for that second attack to hit. Mm -hmm. And then for one grass energy. So the question is, how good is this attack? Do the wave 20 X is 20 damage for each of your benched Pokemon. So you basically cap out right now at a uh, at 100 damage. 
Mm -hmm. So without any damage modifiers, without any weakness, you know, factoring in there a hundred festival grounds is a stadium that's going to be in this set. We'll talk about it a little bit later. It's not super great, but it's primary goal is to boost the festival lead effect so uh one thing to note as justin notes on his website that you may have read if you watched the video version of the podcast already festival lead does not work for attacks it can use but does not actually have it can for example attack twice using atm's attack after your first attack um or actually yeah. Well, if you use a TM, it's not like the TM gets discarded and then you get another attack turn. It's basically like if you opt to use the TM, festival lead does not work. Correct. It's you know how there are yeah. some attacks that like like Cramorant specifies that this Pokemon may attack without, you know, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. But you can use TMs on Cramorant if you meet on the loss on Cramorant if you meet the condition. Whereas this, you can only use the attacks that this Pokemon has, not that it mm -hmm. can have access to. Because, like, think yes. about it. Like, imagine, I mean, it would be pretty good. Imagine TM Evolution twice, or imagine, <laughs> <laughs> or imagine um, doing, like, Evolution crisis, twice? Well, or doing Crisis Punch twice, right? 280, oh, 280. Yeah. Like, excuse me? What? Um, so, but yeah, I do think that this Diplin, though, you know, if you think about this, I'm, there are other cards out there um, that we'll get to. There's like a supporter, I think, that boosts your attack damage. Um, but like 200 damage that you can do like to in total. So 100 and then 100 more either to the same Pokemon or to a different one. If you throw in cards like, you know, I don't know, maybe the um, the tool card, the uh, maximum belt would be good in this deck. Mm -hmm. So you're actually doing 150, 150. You throw in the supporter, you know. This, I think, has a lot of interesting um, uses in uh, in the format. I, I think I think this will be like a really interesting deck. I think it'll be a fun and an interesting card to try out. I think this one's probably the most likely to put with that Rillaboom in the pre-release kit because it is a stage one. Um, I think they wouldn't want to put basics with this ability in there. I think they'd want to keep it in stage one. But also like... Probably Festival Lead is insanely broken in pre-release, right? Because yeah. you barely have any setup usually. So maybe they won't do it. I don't know. <laughs> uh, Jake, what's the next card that was on your radar as you look forward? I want to... I just want to stop by Iron Leaves real quick. Not too long overall. Does have a Grass Energy first attack. Just one Grass Energy called Recovery Net. Put up to two Pokemon from your discard pile into your hand. So it could be nice in a certain situation if you're trying to get uh, Pokemon back. Whether you had to discard them early off of different effects or whatever. Maybe late in the game for like a control style deck. Then you have the second attack, Grass Colorless, Colorless, 100 plus damage. If any of your Pokemon were knocked out by damage from an attack on your opponent's Pokemon during last turn, it does 60 more damage. So a revenge type attack that does 160 damage with weakness doesn't knock out a Charizard. You're 10 damage off. But again, like we said, you know, you have damage modifiers in the format. So uh, could potentially reach there if you have something. Yeah, it's, it's a good little, like, you know, in, if we ever get back to a format where you can accelerate one energy plus, like, a double turbo, it's a good revenge attack. I think this is interesting because mm -hmm. revenge attacks have been pretty standard in the Pokemon format for a while, but this one, I think, raises the cap from used to be 30 plus 90, and now it's 100 plus 60 for this one. It does cost three energy, so, you know. Yeah, it costs a little bit more, so. But it's interesting to see them experimenting with you know, changing what the cap might be on revenge. Mm -hmm. um, the next ones I want to talk about br really briefly. Um, I don't know if they're good, but I'll mention the Polchageist real quick. The ability mm -hmm. storehouse hideaway. I just wanted to mention that this ability is interesting because it says, as long as this Pokemon is on your bench, prevent all damage from and effects of attacks on from your opponent's Pokemon done to this. So it's like, you know, it gets the Bidoof ability, 
plus, you know, I, I don't know, like whatever. It's Bidoof and Jirachi combined, but just right. for that Pokemon. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So I, I like this though. It's only 30 HP. So you kind of think to yourself like, oh, like I, if I'm in a format where anybody can place damage counters or then it's kind of a worthless Pokemon, to be honest. So I Yeah, like with Dragapult they... coming out, we'll talk oh, about that gosh. later. So yeah, I, I really like that they have um, in, included this. Now, mm -hmm. I think uh, the question is, does it evolve into anything <laughs> interesting? Like, what do I even want this on my bench? Um, and I will, uh, I, I will say there, it evolves eventually into a Sinistra or a Sinistra EX. I don't know which one. Jake, is there one that you think is better to cover or should we just do? What do you think? I think they're both relatively interesting. Um, I don't know if either of them are particularly good, but I do like both of them in general. I think they're both interesting. The first one is a non rule box Pokemon 70 HP stage one uh, grass type Pokemon has two one grass energy attacks. The first one is curse drop, put four damage counters on your opponent's Pokemon in any way you'd like, you know, real cheap, decent setup. Uh, stuff like that and then spill the tea is the second one discard up to three basic grass energy cards from your pokemon and play it does 70 damage for each card you discarded this way so for one grass energy discarding three grass energies on the on the attack could net you 210 damage so again with that weakness i mean it could be interesting in sort of like the charizard matchup which i think is really cool um could be an interesting option in there and 210 you're a little bit short of damage modifiers could be nice in something like chin pow right um because the chin pow uh has 220 so could be could be something there and then the ex the rule box version has 240 hp as that stage one has two different attacks one colorless energy is the first attack recipe reciprocity yep is that how you say it Indeed. uh for each bass for each basic grass energy in your discard pile put two damage counters on one of your opponent's pokemon then shuffle your cards or those cards into your deck so almost doing like a victini style uh if you remember the uh prism star victini right the fire pokemon that like Tord played in 2019 in his firebox list uh, being able to count the amount of energies in your discard pile, shuffle them back into your deck and do damage based on how many you shuffle. I think it's still like a 2-2 two -two in there. The difference is, is that this one is the flexibility of you can put this damage on whatever Pokemon you want. Has to be one Pokemon, but you can put it wherever you want. So yeah. could be a really interesting finishing move if you have something that uh, gets a lot of energies discarded in some way like i remember uh several of the decks that utilize the victini like uh blacephalon yes exactly. for instance uh blacephalon discarded energies from your hand right yep. the little baby blacephalon so uh that matched well with that card so you could have one of these and do like a finishing move on a pokemon or maybe a sniping type move on a Pokemon, and then the second attack, Grass Colorless, Matcha Splash, 120 damage, heal 30 damage from each of your Pokemon in there. Um, and then reminder, as another translators know, all of the damage counters from Reciprocity go to the same Pokemon. You're not picking a new Pokemon for each energy. So yeah. um, again, all on one. But uh, I think these cards are interesting, at least. I don't think they're necessarily super good, but I think they're interesting. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, this is one where I I like it. I think it's interesting. I don't know if we have a grass attacker or a grass deck that would need a lot of energy and then puts them all into the discard. I think, mm -hmm. to your point, though, this is a cool finisher, right? Like, if you mm -hmm. need that Victini turn, and the fact that you have a Sinist... Um, what is it, a, a, where does it evolve from? It evolves from... No, no. A Poltergeist. A Poltergeist, yeah. If you if yeah. you have that poltergeist that does that can't be affected, the only way your opponent can stop you from getting into this is to boss it up or prime catcher it up. So, mm -hmm. you know, which doesn't feel too bad if they're gonna go after a single prizer, right? So I, I do like it. Um Jirachi is in the format, so that could turn that first attack off, to be honest. But I, yeah, but I nobody's playing it right now with Sableye running around. That's true. So yeah, I mean it's interesting. 
to your point, it's interesting. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it has a partner attacker that needs all that grass energy yet, but we'll see. <laughs> I do, I do want to say though that it's not the best grass type Pokemon because Teal Mask Ogre Pond EX, in my opinion, is a really good deck coming into this next format. It was so prevalent in the Champions League, and I can't wait to dive into it a little bit more to talk about in the future cast for you all about this deck. But if you pull this card this weekend, either keep it close to you or sell it for big money in trades uh you know because this is a this is a good card the ability is teal dance 210 hp basic grass type pokemon once during your turn you may attach a basic grass energy card from your hand to this pokemon if you attach any energy to a pokemon in this way draw a card so especially as a basic you get a couple of these down on the field and you're drawing cards like crazy and we all know that drawing cards is good in the pokemon trading <laughs> card game and then yeah. for three enter three grass energies specifically you do my raid leave shower 30 plus damage does 30 more damage for each energy attached to both active pokemon so if you have three energy and your opponent's charizard has two that is 100 and no 20. 180 yeah, yeah so if you just have the right amount of energies you knock out a charizard so uh really really good overall just in that and then that's 180 damage so any other pokemon that does that has more you can hit like 210 240 right there without any damage modifiers and the energy acceleration is there because of the other teal mask ogre pawn exs that you can have on the field yeah and and like it's just i think this is a crazy card um i i think it's this a card, card is going to be so good um I, I just i think about this card jake and we have the new card there's a new item that we'll get to as well that allows you to switch out mm -hmm. which you know mask pokemon you're using uh um, which ogre pond uh no there's a uh, which ogre pond right right um yeah yeah so you know i don't know if that made its way into those decks but on its own you're basically getting a, like kind of a shadow rider calyrex effect but it's mm -hmm. on a basic pokemon that turn one you could just Turn one, play two, three of these with a nest ball. It doesn't even need to come from your hand. Then you play energies, you redraw your hand. We have Earthen Vessel in the format to go get you those energies. It's just, yeah, you could you could build up. This is interesting because you can really build up a board state where your opponent can't really do much because there's just energy everywhere. And they're like, well, crap. <laughs> what am I supposed to do about this? Just taking big knockouts. I... The more that I see like these cards, the more glad that I am that Battle VIP pass rotated. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oy, oy, oy. Um, so yeah, just keep an eye out for Teal Mask uh, Ogre mm -hmm. Pony X when you're when you're opening your packs. Um, <laughs> if if you hate uh, the uh, if you hate the um. Gosh, man, Teal Ogre Pong. I forgot the name of it. If you hate Teal Ogre Pong EX, you can play Macargo EX in your text. Macargo EX, a fire type, 270 HP, stage one EX Pokemon from Crimson Haze, has two attacks for fire, colorless, hot magma, 70 damage. Your opponent's active Pokemon is now burned. And then fire, fire, colorless, 140 plus damage. Each player discards the top card of their deck. This attack does 140 more damage for each energy card you discarded this way. So, reminiscent of an old Entei, I believe it was. I can't remember what set it exactly was from, but there was an Entei with a very similar attack. Um, being able to do huge damage if you're able at all to manipulate your top deck at certain points of the game, we do have Cypher Maniacs code breaking, right? So that could do something to manipulate your top deck, at least. So if we ever get something like a Chip Chip Ice Axe type oh, effect, <laughs> which, yeah, I don't know if they would do because I think that they're pretty afraid of that card. But if they do ever do something like that once again, could be really useful for this guy right here, especially like you said earlier, we have Magma Basin in yeah. format so accelerating energies is something that you can do yeah i mean it's a cool attack it's one of those weird ones where 
if you're using your supporter for the turn and it's not doing anything for you but putting an energy on top and guaranteeing your next turn's top deck, it's, mm-hmm. not, it's not a bad thing inherently. Like, you could string these together, um, but it does kind of feel like 280 is a good number. Don't get me wrong. 280 is a good number, but mm-hmm. I, I don't know. I Maybe this is weirdly good, Jake, in um, control. Because you're still discarding the top of your opponent's deck and you're doing damage. Yeah, well, I don't know, because why would you ever want to knock out? Why would you ever play this uh, against like Chiyu, right? Well, Chiyu does the top two of your opponent's deck, but none of your deck. This has the ability of like you can do your you can like kind of get through your deck a little faster. But again, Chiyu is a basic, so yeah I, I don't know maybe it's not maybe she use a basic it. does does two energies and then accelerates fire energies yeah. on other pokemon and it's first attack discards two cards from your opponent's top deck so i don't i don't know if you would maybe like another yeah. maybe like a control firebox <laughs> deck i don't think i i think uh, I'm, i think i'm wild in here jake i don't think this is good in that i think I was just you you try house. you try it and let me know how it goes <laughs> yeah. uh Anywho, um, let's look, take a look here at uh, some of the other Pokemon we got going on. Um, we have, oh, should we go to Infernape? Is that is that one of the That's cards one of that... the pre-release promos. Yes, so in, in, Infernape is another one of our pre-release promos. Uh, this is a stage two, 140 HP single prize Pokemon with the ability Fire Dancing. Once during your turn, you may attach a basic fire energy a basic fighting energy or one of each from your hand to your Pokemon in any way you like. That's crazy powerful. Um, fire fighting is, you know, they've been paired together before. I think there was a car coal, I think it was that used to do. Yes. Or, yes. This, like that, that evolution line did something similar. Um, and then for a, a fire fire colorless, you do 200 damage, discard an energy from this Pokemon. I honestly think that um, the attack is not really what this is here for. If you were to think about it competitively, the ability Mm -hmm. to attach two energy of different types from your hand, your Pokemon in any way you are like every single turn. And then you also have, again, I'm going to mention it again, earthen vessel in format. So Mm -hmm. every turn you could potentially guarantee like Mm -hmm. earthen vessel, I'm going to go grab two energy. And you sort of think about this, like, you know, we, we talk about how good, um, mirage gate is for a lot of decks and i don't think that that makes this this isn't quite as good as mirage gate because it's very specific on the energy but Mm -hmm. if you are playing a deck where you would want fire and or fighting i think that um it's basically about as good because you don't have to play a lost zone engine you don't have to lost zone cards and then once you get this online you could just do this every single turn rather than you get four of them per game so that that's I don't know. I think this could be a really strong ability if it finds the right home. Especially with Earthen Vessel in the format, being able to find a basic and a fighting energy, because I feel like a lot of the problems that you could run into this if you do try to use this energy accelerant engine is that, oh, I've got one of these energies, but I don't have the other energy, right? Yep. You can't just attach two fire energies, right? That's not what it's saying. It's like you can attach one fire energy and or one fighting energy yep um so really a max of two but you have to have different types of energies so really i i I like it i think it's cool i think it's very cool being a stage two i think will limit it severely Mm -hmm. if you think about like the other decks that will tolerate a stage two acceleration engine and right now i think there's one and it's back and the reason that people tolerate it is it's it's as many energy as you want (laughs) so Mm -hmm. At least with Excalibur, like the limitless ability, like so that might hold this back long term. But you know, I, I think more fire acceleration support that we're seeing here is just like okay, fire might have a comeback soon. I think it, it goes in waves. So I think that they're trying mm-hmm. to make fire a relevant archetype again. Jake, Sean, going into the chandelier, it's not really a good card, but I do want to talk about it a little bit because it is interesting uh card design in here it's a stage two chandelure 130 hp fire type pokemon has an attack for one fire energy called mind ruler 30 
times damage. This attack does 30 damage for each card in your opponent's hand. And so you may be thinking like, oh, one fire, you know, 30 times, not bad, but they can kind of play around it because like, well, then you just don't have a lot of cards in your hand. But Sean, it has the ability inviting light. Once during your turn, you may use this ability. Each player draws a card. Yeah. I don't know if we really had something like this, as, especially recently in the Pokemon trading card game, where you have an effect to where like you're really influencing your opponent in something like this of like drawing a card. But I, I don't know. I think it's I don't know. It's kind of cheeky. I, I really like this. I think that I don't know about in standard format, but there's a part of me, Jake, that really wants to like see somebody build an expanded format version of this deck with Dusk Tone. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. OK. Duskstone with this, because du people forget Duskstone would let you, I think, search your deck for uh, Chandelure and just evolve it instantly, right? Well, it's only specific Pokemon that Duskstone works on. It's like Murkrow, Miss Magius, Magius. Um, I can't Aegis Slash. Oh, Chandelure yeah. is one of them. Yes. Miss yeah. Magius, Honchkrow, Chandelure or Aegis Slash. Yeah, so that's why I was like, I, I feel like there was a, you could do Chandelier stuff back in the day with Dusk Zone. Mm -hmm. And I think there's a world, Jake, in which I don't know if Mill is good, but there are some decks that, um, are, aren't there some decks that do more damage, like some Gengar decks or whatever that do damage based on the number of item cards in your opponent's hand? Yeah, Gengar Mimikyu does it based on trainer cards, I believe. So you can imagine getting like, maybe you get a few of these on the field. You mm -hmm. do a few of these in a turn. Because it doesn't say you can only use one of these abilities. So if you get three of them out, you're all drawing three. You're and just also, switching between them all? Right. I mean, you don't even have to switch. They don't have to be in the active. They just, they just are on oh, the field. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. Yeah. Oh. So hmm. you just make them draw a whole, a whole hand and then do a big attack? Like... Either that, or there's also a, a really cheeky world. I don't think this is a good deck, but it would be a fun meme deck. You, you try to get four of these out, and then you play a mill deck with this. And then I mean, you could do you could do like a mill deck. You could also do a donk deck kind of thing, um, because donk deck draws a ton of cards yeah. on turn one. So you could just have your opponent do that. There's also several cards in expanded that uh, play off of your opponent's hand. Something like the Colrus, or no, that's Pokemon. Um, I meant captivating Pokepuff, okay. right? Being able to play down a Pokemon in your opponent's hand after they reveal it. So, um, just interesting mechanics overall in yeah. expanded that. Are, are they're interesting <laughs> so like look we don't talk about expanded much but i do think that because of dusk zone i think this actually might be a fun deck to try out and expanded i don't know the mm -hmm. format but that's where i see this living i don't i don't necessarily think this is a good deck in standard currently but who knows somebody call somebody call stefan ivanov haven't right. <laughs> figured <it> out <laughs> um but I think the next card on our list, Jake, that we should talk about is Hearth Flame Mask Ogre Pond. So another one of the Ogre Ponds that you can use an item card we'll talk about later on. But this one is a fire type, 210 HP, fire, colorless, colorless is the first attack, 20 damage, 20 damage for each damage counter on this Pokemon. So, you know, if you get a bigger Ogre Pond out and it survives a hit, you could basically swap this out maybe and then do a bunch of damage for that. Like that's that's interesting. And then it's second attack for three fire energy. Does 140 damage plus. If your opponent's active Pokemon is an evolution, it does 140 more. And then you discard all the energy from this Pokemon. Um I don't know. This one's interesting. Jake, what do you what do you what's your read? I think you probably just try to do this for weakness purposes in terms of the Wraithful Heart. You do have something like Magma Basin in format to try to get some sort of damage counters on the Mask Ogre Pawn EX because, well, with 210 HP, a lot of things are just one-shotting you in there, so you can't really depend on getting like partially chipped for a knockout unless maybe you're facing something like Dragapult, right? Yeah which we'll talk about later, but Dragapult kind of like spreads damage counters or certain specific matchups um, that first attack could do a lot of stuff with. 
Um, and then with a lot of evolution Pokemon that are going to be around in this format, multiple stage twos, you can dependably get 280 off of this attack. The thing about this and also the Teal Mask Ogre Pond is their, I, don't, I, I guess I would say their best attack quote unquote you know these three energy filled attacks are all with the same type of energy mm. uh or i'm sorry they all have they different all, yeah they all types take of energy, energy that are required yes exactly so three grass three fire which makes switching them out really weird because you're not gonna ever have the ability to get the different energy on right mm -hmm. so to your point it's really like you pick a base you pick a, a, one of the Ogre Pawns to be the main attacker, and then you switch the other ones out, if at all, for the purpose of weakness, which I think is is the point you were making about that first attack, is really it's just a switch it out, throw a fire energy on, and go. Mm-hmm. So. Interesting. <laughs> it, it's... Uh, it's we'll talk more about it. We'll talk more about it in the coming weeks, because the Ogre Pawn deck is really cool to see. Jake, what is the next Pokemon on your radar? I don't really want to talk about the Goldeen too much, but I will mention it is a festival lead Pokemon, 50 HP basic water type Pokemon. Um, so that festival lead, again, if you have that festival grounds, you can use the attack twice. If it knocks out your opponent's active Pokemon the first time around yeah, that you do it, but it's attack not as good in my opinion uh for two colorless energies does whirlpool 10 damage flip a coin if heads discard an energy from your opponent's active pokemon so it's like a bad seeking do you remember the seeking yeah, it, that you flip three coins discard an energy for each heads yeah i, I mean, do remember that yeah it's a basic so and you can use double turbo on it and just do zero damage and discard energy so like I don't know. I, the only reason I could see this seeing play, Jake, is you can search out Crushing Hammer. You can search out Enhanced Hammer, which is getting a reprint, which we'll talk about. Mm -hmm. So you could do a control deck with Goldeen as your main attacker um, and just discard your opponent's energy. But the question is, are we in a format where that makes sense, where that matters, right? Mm -hmm. Um. And I don't know, with all the mass, like the Ogre Ponds, which attach so much energy with Baxcalibur, with, um, you know, Mila and Magma Basin and Charizard, it just starts to feel like the discarding of energy doesn't really have as much of an impact currently. But, if you did more damage, sure, but sure. no. Yeah. <laughs> or if it did like paralysis and discarding an energy because it's only 10 damage. <laughs> yeah. So Not good balancing on this one. No. Jake, what is the next one that uh, caught your eye then? I want to talk about the Melotic in there with its ability Serenity. It has an ability, this 120 HP water type Pokemon. Your opponent's Pokemon in play and any cards attached to those Pokemon can't be put into your opponent's hand. So M Melotic, Milotic. I don't know, Melodic. Um, again, a bench sitter Pokemon with a pretty interesting ability that does a little bit of prevention of what your opponent wants to do. Professor Turo's scenario, things of that nature cannot work with this Pokemon in play. So really, really uh, curious in my opinion. I know Professor Turo's scenario has gotten a little bit more play and stuff like Gardevoir and Charizard um stuff like that even like control right so especially if they have some uh, if you have like some good spread decks or um any sort of decks that play a high count of like counter catcher boss things like that and your opponent plays uh support pokemon like two prizers support pokemon like lumineon or rotom stuff like that they will not leave the field unless you play like a collapse stadium because to your point, Collapse Stadium doesn't put them into your hand. It puts them mm -hmm. dis discard. So I I like this card a lot. I think um, certain decks, to your point, want this card. I think spread decks, where whether it's... I think a Lost Zone deck, if you really focused back again on Sableye and you tried to set up a one-turn kill most of your opponent's Pokemon, 
I think in that deck, you really need to have something like this Melodic. I think Dragapult, the new Dragapult EX, which we'll get to, probably might consider this Melodic. Mm -hmm. um, or Pidgeot Control could consider this Melodic because that's another thing, right? Like, unless you're playing a bunch of switching cards, a lot of people are instead playing Professor Turo or Penny, maybe Sharon's Care in very specific decks. But like, those there's also cards. the uh, there's also the Scoop Up Cyclone. Yep. Right? The yep. A spec. Yeah, that got reprinted. That's a good point. Yeah. So you're going to have a few decks, I think, that look at this card and go, hmm, I think I need this. The same way that those decks might want Jirachi or Manaphy, you might want to play a 1 1 line of Phoebus and Melodic. So, mm -hmm. uh, next one on my radar, we'll talk about the Frost Last. So, this is mm -hmm. the third in the pre releases. Uh, this frost lasts 90 HP stage one, the ability freezing curtain during your Pokemon checkup, put one damage counter on each Pokemon in play with an ability, except any frost lasts. Um, and then the, uh, the, the attack does 60 damage for a water and a colorless. That's not why this exists. Um, mm -hmm. but I really, I think I, I personally, Jake, I love spread decks like this. I think the old wheezing deck that would put mm -hmm. two damage counters on any Pokemon that had a damage counter on them, I think, or a basic. It was like, like it was, I think it was, um, you had a, you had a ability that put it on basic Pokemon yes. and then you had the attack that put it on all the Pokemon that had damage counters on it exactly. or something like that. So I think something like this though, I really enjoy these type of decks because they're very, it can be very calculated, right? You're just like spreading mm -hmm. damage over your opponent's board slowly. You're building up to take like a, basically a one or a two turn board wipe effectively. That's mm -hmm. what you're trying to get to. So, and the fact that this doesn't have to be in the active, I think helps a lot. You can focus on having a different attacker that does more of what you're trying to do. So, yeah. People have been calling for a uh, like predecessor to Shrine of Punishment, uh, right? Yeah. Old uh, stadium card from like the 2018, 2019 era that would put damage counters on GXs uh, in the checkup phase of turn. So this one being cool, because in my opinion, abilities are very, very prevalent. A lot of Pokemon right now have uh, abilities in the format and especially with you know, some of the other decks that are coming around, some of the good decks uh, may be nice to have this in a spread sort of style. Because I do agree with you. I do think it's a very interesting and expressive play style to have the kind of like wheezing Frostless uh, type decks in the format. Um, so moving on to the next ones. Uh, Let's go into the Froakie okay. here, because although okay. it's a little basic Froakie, it does kind of play into a, a big, big card later in the podcast that we'll talk about. This Froakie is a 60 HP water type Pokemon with the first attack flock for one water energy. Search your deck for up to two Froakies and put them on your bench. Then shuffle your deck. An excellent turn one for a uh, Greninja EX deck, right? Being able to okay. help your setup. If maybe you don't hit the Buddy Buddy Poffins, maybe you uh, instead use your Buddy Buddy Poffins or something like that for other Pokemon and then use Flock to get your uh, Froakies down to build up your bench. Okay, so... Keep this one in mind before we get to mm -hmm. Greninja EX, everybody. Yes, that's I mean, that's why I wanted <laughs> yeah. to stop by and talk about it, because it is it is a viable option for your basic line in choice. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, next card in the lineup, we have I'll just mention it. Palafin, I just because I'm just looking at the wall of text on this ability. Oh, this pala <laughs> this Palafin combo is insane in my opinion this finizen and palafin combo um so this palafin uh is a stage one and it says once during your turn when this pokemon moves from the active spot to the bench you may search your deck for palafin ex and switch it with this pokemon wait hold on mm -hmm. so yes. when you when you move it from the active to the bench you can instead turn it into a palafin ex when it goes to the bench. yes Be it, it's very similar to the video game, where in the video game, I believe 
Like you start the battle, you throw out your palafin, and it's in the the little dolphin mode, woo woo woo. And then when you switch it out to send out another Pokemon, it evolves into like the superhero palafin form. Um, and it's the same thing with this ability. Once it leaves your active and goes to your bench, you can basically evolve it. I don't. It's not technically evolving. Um, it's more just like changing form. Um, so I don't. It yeah. does. It you can only evolve. You can only, only play, play it yeah. from this ability, from this zero to hero ability of switching from the active to the bench. So if you play something like a uh, Jock or Wally, I, right, I, it does not work. Well, so I I will say, yeah, you can't you can't evolve into Palafin EX. Is your point? Is it? can only come into play with the ability of the one prize or palafin. Well, you can yeah, yeah, yeah. you can yeah. you cannot evolve into the superhero rule box version. Yes. They're both named palafin, so just to clarify. <laughs> Jake, can I offer you a turn 1 donk deck? A turn 1 donk deck? With this card. Uh, can you turn 1 donk? Yes. I guess you could with Wally. Salvatore. Oh, Salvatore, okay. So you you get your Salvatore, you get that little finizen out as your starter. Mm -hmm. You Salvatore into Palafin, you switch into whatever, preferably a the Mew superhero. I mean, well, no, you switch. Oh, into yeah, a yeah, yeah. So you have a free retreater. It mm -hmm. turns into Palafin EX. Palafin EX's attack, Jake, is just one water energy for Giga Impact to do 250 damage. That knocks yep. out any basic Pokemon that your opponent is probably putting down. Uh, and then all of a sudden, you have a 340 HP stage one that does 250 damage. And it says during your next turn, this Pokemon can't attack. But, you know, switching cards, Jake. You already want them mm -hmm. in the deck for your turn one. Switching cards. Don't worry about it. Um, I, this, Jake, I think this is a deck. I think this is a deck. I know at least this is a deck that people are really, really interested in and excited about because, I mean, the Palafin, like you said, there are combos to get this going right away. And that 250 damage for one water energy is so good. It's really, really interesting overall how this card interacts with your deck and the game because it's not like you need the superhero EX Palafin in your hand, right? When you switch into from the uh, baby Pokemon to the rule box Pokemon, you search your deck and evolve it. And then the little baby version of Palafin goes into your deck actually it's shuffled into your deck so there is a world where you're grabbing evolutions to constantly evolve your finisons into this stage one baby palafin because it doesn't get discarded um so it, i mean it's honestly just like really really cool i know a lot of people are toying around with the idea i think andrew mahone has uh tried a little bit in some of his tabletop streams if you want to try to see some footage of the deck potentially i don't know how well they went i've been busy with work lately but um but yeah just a just a really really interesting card in general like like always i feel like we've said the last couple sets there's just a couple interesting cards in the game that they're printing like interaction wise well um moving on now to a few of the different cards um I don't know. Is the walking wake anything, Jake? I don't think so. The walking wake for water, water, colorless does 20 damage, 20 times damage. Put up to nine damage counters on this Pokemon. It does 20 damage for each damage counter you placed in this way. So doing uh, put nine. Yeah, doing 180 total without any damage modifiers. I, I don't know. I don't I don't really think it's that great. I'd rather talk about the Wellspring Mask Ogre Pond EX. I think this is the third of four Mask Ogre Pond EX that we're going to talk about. 210 HP basic water type Pokemon has the first attack sob 20 damage for one colorless energy during your opponent's next turn. The defending Pokemon can't retreat. Eh, all right. But this one, this Ogre Pawn, is a little bit different than the other ones. Only requires one specific type of energy for its second attack. One water and two colorless. So could be comboed well with the other 
uh, ogre puns with an item that we'll get to later that we've alluded to at least four times mm-hmm. already <laughs> in this podcast. The attack for one water and two colorless is torrential pump for 100 damage. You may shuffle three energy attached to this Pokemon into your deck. If you do, this attack also does 120 damage to one of your opponent's benched Pokemon. So shuffling those energies back in, especially maybe if the colorless energies are grass type, right? To use later with the Teal Mask Ogre Pawn. Could be interesting. You can do 100 damage to the active and 100 damage or 120 damage to the bench, which takes out a lot of interesting benched Pokemon, in my opinion. Yeah, no, I really like this. I think there's a world in which um, you could also get this off turn one, Jake, Mm -hmm. um, going second. If you use the grass ogre ponds, you have to have a good hand. You have to draw a bunch of cards, but yeah, you have to you have to start out really well. Yeah. But you could play energy switches with this Mm -hmm. Um, and you could energy switch your way into loading this up with a couple grass and then throwing the water on. And basically you can get that turn one effectively a radiant Greninja effect, but you can get it without your opponent even knowing that this Pokemon was in your deck. Right. They set up. They they don't even see this Pokemon on the field. And then all of a sudden you do it. And so it's it's cool. I think this is a it's a really useful attack. It gives a lot more versatility to the archetype of of the um, Ogre Pond decks. It's just so interesting to see these cards. I'm really excited about the Ogre Ponds. Nice. Well, into the lightning we go. Let's see. Is there anything particularly interesting? I guess we'll take a little stop at Luxray. Mm -hmm. Um, briefly the Luxray EX here, it is a stage two Pokemon, 310 HP lightning type, two colorless. You do 120, your opponent reveals their hand. You choose a card in their hand and you discard it. So that's pretty good, especially if you combo this with, um, things like Iono, Roxanne, Judge, maybe early game or the new, uh, unfair stamp card the uh the Mm -hmm. uh new a spec that's coming out so there's certainly a world where you can combo this to make your opponent have almost no hand if 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 sometimes no hand at all um in response second attack two lightning 250 discard all the energy but that's good um but i don't know if you're really playing a deck focused around lightning energy to do a bunch of damage um i think maybe that's useful late game but Really, I think that first attack is where it's at. Luxray continuing on this kind of control aspect for a couple of its last cards in there. But I don't really see a way in this one is overly playable. So no. being a stage two makes it really hard, I think. Mm hmm. Jake. One of the things that can combo <laughs> with your Macargo, right? We talked about the Macargo EX doing more damage based on your top deck. If it's an energy card that you discard, if you play the more Peko, there's a little more Peko in here. Has the ability snack, snur- snack search. Once during your turn, you may look at the top card of your deck. You may discard that card. So if you see an energy there, you could just leave that little guy there, <laughs> use your uh, Macargo, and uh, go ahead and do more damage. So um, I just wanted to stop by uh, this one. With the lightning attack, pick and stick, attach up to two basic energy cards from your discard pile to your Pokemon in any way you like. Yeah. I I mean, it's kind of like mean tier with the Macargo, but I do, I do like the combo. Yeah. I, I like the- discarding the one card. <laughs> the question for this one, I think this is, it's interesting, right? Because it's almost a draw. Mm-hmm. Like if you have a card like a Radiant Greninja or any other card that draws you a couple of cards, sometimes you're like, sometimes looking at that top card, knowing it's something you don't want may change like how you operate, right? Like maybe you choose to discard it. Maybe you do something different on your turn. I I don't know, but it's interesting, but I don't know if it's worth a whole bench spot, right? Like it's, it's in between for me of like, is it a whole bench spot worthy? But probably not, (laughs) probably not, but you never know. Um, One thing that could have a a bench spot for the Iron Thorns EX has the ability initialize this 230 HP future type lightning Pokemon. 
As long as this Pokemon is in the active spot, Pokemon with the rule box in play have no abilities except any future Pokemon. So hmm. I do believe that this is actually a half decent deck in uh, in Japan. From what I've seen, I've seen several deck lists of it. Uh, we don't necessarily have all the results from the Champions League, so I can't tell you if it did like super well or not um but i do know it's something that you may have to look out for since there are future decks right out there that potentially do more damage and things like that and can be a little bit stally um yeah. with rule box pokemon abilities being taken out it does have that lightning colorless colors attack bolt cyclone 140 damage move an energy from this pokemon to one of your benched pokemon could be good in putting it to another iron thorns to chain the iron thorns or maybe a uh whatchamacallit iron the hands. iron hands yeah right uh with lightning energy we we do have the uh generator the i almost forgot the name of it the electromagnetic generator uh oh, yeah. to be able to accelerate energies so i don't know uh could be an annoyance in the format <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I think the only problem with this card, in my opinion, is that Forest Sealstone is still in the format, uh, and Forest Sealstone is not an ability on a Pokemon. It's ability on an item, so it gets around to this. So if you are mm -hmm. playing this and somebody plays a Forest Sealstone, they can then go grab a boss, a Prime Catcher, whatever, to get this out of the active, and then they're they're off to the races. Just it's the same thing mind. that we've seen. Yeah, it's something that we've seen in the format previously. Yeah, so... I think it's cool because it actually is a decent attacker. 140 is not bad. And if you were to combine this with some Iron Crowns, that damage mm -hmm. does, you know, get kind of interesting. So it just depends. It really depends on the matchup, but um, something to keep in mind. Um, Let's see here. Are there any interesting... <laughs> we have uh, another Kadabra. It's do. not super interesting. I just think, you it know, exists. they printed Kadabra again. Yeah. Really let's, trying let's to catch go. up, Sean. Um, I'll just briefly say the Abra with the teleporter ability. Once during your turn, you could, if it's in the active, you can shuffle it and all cards attach to it into your deck. I don't know why you would do that, but, you know, it's in there. It's a self scoop. Card. Self you know, scoop up. Self, sure. Self, yeah. If, if you're like, you know what? There's no way I'm winning this game. <laughs> scoop yeah. on your own you terms. Just, yeah, exactly. So that, that's one one thing you can do with that. Um, it's certainly something. Oh my gosh! Uh, is there any other psychic Pokemon that is interesting? I'll talk about the Florges real quick. Uh, okay. Stage two psychic type, one hundred forty HP Pokemon has an ability called Captivating Temptation. Once during your turn, you may flip a coin. If heads, switch one of your opponent's bench Pokemon to the active spot. Really nice, you know, gusting effect in there. You do get to choose uh, which Pokemon comes up into the active spot, which is really nice for some stall decks. The new active Pokemon is now confused. Hmm. So not only doing a switching effect, but also doing a kind of confusion effect, right? Especially if you're like a control -y kind of deck, you can use this ability to catch a Pokemon that is potentially going to come up into the active spot, maybe an attacker. If you anticipate your opponent is about to play some sort of switch effect, right, to get a Pokemon that you trapped out of the active spot for whatever reason, you can go ahead and say, you know what? Yeah, bring that Pokemon up. Um, bring that attacker up that you're going to go into. I can't stop you from bringing it up, so I'll bring it up for you, but it's going to be confused. So you have to use more resources to switch it out of the active and then back into the active to not have it confused anymore. So really interesting. Um, I don't know if it's necessarily good in control because it is a stage two. You're already playing a stage two in the control decks with Pidgeot. I don't know how much more you can play, mm -hmm. um, but I do like that this is like a forced boss and then confusion combo. It's cool. It's, it's interesting, right? Like, I think you could build a really fun, annoying deck for your opponent mm -hmm. with this. Because that's the point, right? Like, is it may not be, like, the most competitive card, but if you build a, an annoying deck that's, like, placing a bunch of damage counters, putting a lot of status conditions out, and then that added bit of confusion, we rarely see people lean into confusion in the TCG. But 
And, and so for those of you who don't know, actually, who've never encountered confusion before, which is not, I, I would imagine that has not happened to a lot of people. Yeah, it's to, not super common the last uh, yeah. couple the last couple sets. When you attack, you have to roll a dice. If it's heads, the attack goes through like normal. If it's tails, the attack fails and you take 30 damage. So, you know, it can be really annoying. You can basically waste your whole turn if you have no way of getting out of the confusion. So, mm -hmm. um, next one here, though, is another festival lead card. It is Swirlix. Uh, this one's attack has one psychic, put two damage counters on one of your opponent's Pokemon. So, effectively, you get to put two damage counters twice. You can do it to different Pokemon, to the same Pokemon, whatever you want to do. Um, I don't know if this, like, I don't know where this necessarily sees a ton of play. I mean, maybe it works in the, the deck, but two just... I don't know what it is, Jake. Two damage counters feels so little in the yeah. format. The only one that feels like it's doing enough is uh, the Diplin. Yeah, yeah. So I don't know. Like, I think if you were if you wanted to play the Swirlix and you wanted to play that festival lead type deck, I think you combo with Frostlass to put more damage counters. And then I think you have to play Devolution TM as your finisher, right? Like you put enough damage mm -hmm. counters and you have to be playing against a uh, uh, an evolution deck, which, you know, granted, there's a decent number of evolution decks. But if you do that, you can in one turn just, you know, wipe the board of all the problems, basically. Mm -hmm. So, Jake, what's next on your list, though? <laughs> There's several cards in here that are interesting. I feel like I want to talk real quick about the Enamorous. Okay. Um, The Enamorous is funny i guess you could say 120 hp basic psychic type pokemon has a second attack that i would just want to talk about real quick psychic colorless colorless love resonance 80 plus damage if you have a pokemon with the same type as one of your opponent's pokemon in play this attack does 120 more damage so effectively could use 200 damage really interesting in my opinion in something like a guard of war deck with um because of radiant greninja right yeah. radiant greninja we talked about it before we even had a slight conversation about like is radiant greninja one of the best pokemon cards of all time right yeah. it is played in pretty much every deck it's so good being able to draw cards and so well look at that if you have a radiant greninja and your opponent has a radiant greninja <laughs> Here's an efficient one or here's an efficient basic Pokemon one prize attacker in a Gardevoir list that you can get the energies easily on and be able to hit for a ton of oh, I'm sorry, a ton of damage. Um, so it's it's really curious, I think, overall. Yeah, no, I I think it's a very good point, Jake, because like in a format where there's one card, there's there's almost always one card in any format that most mm -hmm. decks play. Whether it is Dedenne or Crobat or, you know, for, for a second there, it might have been Luminion and now it's Radiant Greninja. It's always that mm -hmm. one. So, yeah, I think this is cool. This kind of recognizes that formats usually go like that. So, um, the next one I want to talk about briefly is Screamtail EX, Jake. Mm -hmm. So, I also love this Screamtail just looking absolutely insane here uh as a tiny just screaming baby yeah just screaming yeah, yeah just screaming <laughs> <laughs> so what's cool about this though is it's first attack for one colorless you can shriek you can use this attack only if you go second and only during your first turn during your opponent's next, next turn they can't play any supporter cards from their hand and um the reason i love this there's so many decks that they really need to play a supporter for their deck to function properly. Like the mm -hmm. odds that they just have everything they need in their hand without having played a supporter once during the game is really low. So Screamtail is like really awesome, I think, as an attacker in Gardevoir decks because Gardevoir is a setup deck. You need time, right? And Screamtail basically says, hey, take a turn off. Take another turn one going first, please. Mm-hmm. So I, I it's know, I really the cool. one of the things to note also is that you can only use this attack one time and in one instance, you can't just like chain this attack for the entire game. 
right? You can only use it if you're going second on your first turn. Um, that's the only time that you can use the attack. So basically preventing your opponent, if your opponent is going first, from using a supporter in their first two turns. And with stuff like Arvin in the format, right? Arvin is super influential to get like Buddy Buddy Poffins and things like that. Um, Eerie does right for the Chin Pao decks, stuff like that. I mean, um, just as you about... mentioned, are just really impactful. I mean, let's even talk about like Dialga, the deck that just won, right? That kind yeah. of deck, it needs research. It needs Iono. It needs to see cards. Yeah, you gotta you, you gotta set things up in those decks. So could be interesting overall as a card. But another card that I did see <laughs> in the Champions League in Gardevoir, and we'll talk more about this in the uh, future. Monkey Dory from the Mask of Change set in Japan. 110 HP psychic type basic Pokemon with the ability Adrenaline Brain. If this Pokemon has any dark energy attached, you may use this ability once during your turn. Move up to three damage counters from one of your Pokemon to one of your opponent's Pokemon. So I believe the strategy in the Guard of War decks that we saw in the Champions League in Japan this past weekend were have one of these on the field. You have like a one of dark energy in your deck and you probably see it because you draw through your deck like crazy. You play Earth and Vessel too. Yeah, yeah, you play Vessel to be able to find that pretty easily. You just attach it to this guy, and then once a turn, just moving damage counters, right? Especially if you play some of the bigger Pokemon in your deck like Gardevoir, because Gardevoir always puts puts damage counters on your Pokemon based on its ability. Uh, being able to move some of those damage counters over can be really, really nice. Yep, very, very cool stuff. Um mm -hmm. I can't remember, Jake. Do we do we think that maybe Monkey Dory or Pheasantipity that they're going to be in the set that comes after our Twilight Masquerade? Probably not. If they're already in the format for Japan, I I, I think the assumption. I think it, I think what it is is they're assumed to be in this upcoming set, Twilight Masquerade. But the okay. but the like. Uh, the art rares. Got it. Okay. Uh, the special illustrations are going to be later. I, I yeah. don't quote me on that, but I think it's something like that. Because I wanted to mention this Pheasantipity too. Uh, we're sticking mm -hmm. on a lot of these Pokemon in a row, but it has an ability. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Adrenaline pher pheromones. If any damage is done to this Pokemon by attacks, and this Pokemon has any darkness energy attached, flip a coin. If heads prevent that damage, so really cool like i think we've seen this effect many times before similar to monkey dory like i think um this this energy feathers does 30 damage for each energy attached to this pokemon it has 120 hp but with something like monkey dory where you can move some damage off of it you can put a bunch of energy on this do a lot of damage and then potentially ha and have the potential where your opponent just can't knock it out right I don't know if this or Monkey Dory is better in Gardevoir. It's it's kind of a hard. It just depends on preference. It seems like Monkey Dory is the the choice for dark energy attachment. But I just wanted to call this out too because it could be interesting. Reminder: If you do play a Pheasantipity in your deck for any reason, I believe um, it has to fulfill both requirements of this Pokemon has a dark energy attached and in opponent is is it an opponent is trying to do damage on the pokemon or it's, if, it's because it says attack. if damage, yeah so it has to be attacked yeah. and survived right uh, it can't be like damage from the abilities right because the yeah, ability is yeah. not an attack no no it's on only there. it's only attack damage so damage counter placements any of that stuff does not does not you know get affected by this ability it's only if somebody okay. tries to attack directly yeah um, yeah yeah so you know so it has are... to fulfill those requirements exactly so uh moving into the fighting pokemon jake um uh, you talked about a lot of pokemon talking about in a row we could just scroll all the way down to greninja really <laughs> <laughs> yeah okay greninja ex jake what does this pokemon do this is one of the better decks coming out of the set. This was very popular in the Japan Champions League. I saw this deck showcased. It was really, really cool overall. This is a 310 HP 
stage two fighting type Terra Pokemon. So has that like bench barrier, self bench barrier ability. Uh, also, I think I forgot to mention this on the Ogre Ponds, but all the other Ogre Ponds are also Terra types. So they also yeah. have that like bench prevention ability, just to be clear. Has a single water type attack, Ninja Blade, 170 damage, but not just 170 for one energy. You may search your deck for a card and put it in your hand. Being able to do 170 damage for one energy and then find any card you want yep. and put it in your hand is good. Uh, <laughs> let me just tell you that right now. And then the second attack for water and two colorless duplicates barrage. You discard two energy from the Pokemon. It does 120 damage to two of your opponent's Pokemon. So I believe the combo that I saw and I, I mean, I, I could be corrected on this and we'll talk again more about it next week. I'll do a lot more studying leading into the uh, episode, but I believe the combo is you have a water energy on the Greninja because that first attack. Yep. And then if you ever want to use the second attack, you attach a double turbo. I believe double turbo is the one of choice that you use on the Greninja. And I think I, th I think this deck plays the a spec. That's the rainbow energy. Is oh. it because it's three, three rainbow energies on a stage two, right? Two, two energies. Two, yeah, two energies on a stage two. So it's like you're basically like playing a fifth double turbo, right? Because yep. even though the double turbo would do 20 less damage to an active Pokemon, the damage isn't modified for bench Pokemon. If you instead target two bench Pokemon, it would still be 120 yes. damage. So uh, really cool overall, just like the uh, Ogre Ponds. If you pull it, keep them tight to your heart because this is a good card to get. I'll also say another combo. This, if this card is really popular, you might see a lot more Manaphy. Uh, mm -hmm. But you can grab a canceling cologne as your mm -hmm. card out of your deck, right? <laughs> so I do believe canceling cologne was played in the stream game that I saw. I believe I saw a canceling cologne in the guy's deck. So you can imagine, like you know, you boss the Manaphy, you canceling cologne it. And then you mm -hmm. do two, 120, you could do it to the Manaphy and to something else, or you could do it to two things in the back. Doesn't matter. I think this is going to be cool, though, because this is going to play similarly to Rapid Strike Urshifu. I think. Yes. I mean, you're playing Iridas in the deck. Um, you don't play Rapid yeah. Strike energy, but like with the double turbos and the, 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 the energy, whatever, the rainbow thing, the A spec, yeah. um, like I mentioned. Um, but yeah, the Iridas are used in this deck and the Iridas are really good in this because, well, the evolutions that you have are water Pokemon and, you know, you probably play something like Radiant Greninja in there. So, uh, yeah, just uh, just a really good deck overall, honestly. So, uh, yeah, that answers one of our uh, questions from the Discord, too. Somebody was asking about mm -hmm. if it could be the start of a new build. The answer is yes. Yes, it can. Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and we'll 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 show you some stuff next week. <laughs> Um, moving on now to some other Pokemon. Uh, I'll actually we can talk about... mention Ting Lu. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So for one fighting energy, ground crack. If a stadium is in play, this deck does 30 damage to each of your opponent's bench Pokemon. Then discard that stadium. Um, mm -hmm. I mentioned this only because, you know, if you are looking to do a spread deck, this could be an interesting combination with that Frostlass. Doing 30 to every Pokemon on the bench for one energy um, and doing it as a single prizer is it's pretty good. And also 140 HP is, you know, a two prizer. An awkward knock it out. number. It's really yeah. awkward, right? Like, so it's that awkward prize trade. You're spreading a bunch of damage. Obviously the biggest problem this deck is going to face is Manaphy. So, you know, I don't know. Maybe you really got to play a couple canceling colognes and maybe you're playing prime catchers and bosses to like, make sure that Manaphy doesn't stick around. But other than that, mm -hmm. I just wanted to mention it. I think it's cool. It is worth noting, you talk about the combination with Frostlass, right? As kind of a spread countdown deck, yep. we'll call it. Um, Frostlass, you can use the Freezing Curtain ability multiple times. Um, it's not a you can only use one Freezing Curtain ability on the Frostlass mm. per checkup phase. If you yeah, have multiple. three... Yeah. yeah, if you have three of them on your bench, you do it three times. So yeah. you could you could start racking up a lot of damage 
on some of the smaller uh, decks that you've faced to really accelerate your countdown with that guy. What's the next one on your list, Jake? I just want to mention the Okie Dokie because I think their names are really Great. funky. <laughs> uh, Monkey Dory, Sarah, or what was it? Pheasantipity and then Okie Dokie. I think they're incredible names. Uh, great job, Pokemon. But Okie Dokie, 130 HP, fighting type, basic Pokemon, adrenaline power as an ability. If this Pokemon has any dark energy attached, it gets 100 plus HP and its attacks do 100 more damage to your opponent's active Pokemon. So for two fighting energy with a 70 base power without any modifiers whatsoever, with a dark energy attached, you can do 170 for those two energies. You technically, though, need three energies to do 170 because its attack is two fighting energies. So you would have to uh, have two fightings and a dark energy to be able to proc that adrenaline power ability. But you know, I wanted to talk about it. I think I don't think it's that great, but like because of the dark energy thing kind of hindering it, if it was fighting in colorless, this would be a different story. But I'll say this. Eh. I'll actually say this, Jake. I think that this is a good include in a lost box deck. Because okay, because you, you can play the um, Mirage Gate. Mirage Gate to go get a fighting in a dark. You attach a fighting from hand. Like lost box decks are used to that, right? Like awkward energy costs, awkward, mm -hmm. you know. And I think this would replace something perhaps like the Hoopa EX, where instead of it okay. being too dark on a fighting type, but it's a stage two, but it's a, a two prizer. Now this is three energy. Um, you're using the same energy kinds that you're already using, and it's just a one prizer that you're leaving in the active now. So. Just wanted to mention that it might be that might be what you switch this out for um, in a lost box deck. I'm trying to. Wasn't there a Hoopa that? Yeah, Hoopa EX um, for two dark. For two. Oh yeah, yeah, the one with two dark. I was like, wait, am I missing something? Like, which Hoopa <laughs> is it? Anyways. Yeah, yeah. Moving on, we'll talk about the final Ogre Pawn EX in here. It is Cornerstone Mask. This is a fighting type Ogre Pawn EX. 210 HP again. So all the Ogre Pawns, basic Pokemon with 210 HP, just really different types as well. Also a Terra type to note. Has the ability Cornerstone Stance. Prevent all damage from attacks done to this Pokemon by your opponent's Pokemon that have an ability. Right, so no path to the peak in format. Very few situations that turn off abilities, and with a lot of Pokemon with abilities running rampant, Cornerstone Stance could be really good for a stallish type scenario for the Ogre Pond decks, especially with a fighting colorless, colorless attack. So similar to the Wellspring, the Water type yep. Ogre Pond having a single kind of required type of energy and then two colorless energies for its attack 140 damage this damn this attacks damage isn't affected by weakness or resistance or any effects on your opponent's active pokemon so basically a shred attack yep um <clears throat> and yeah i mean it's really interesting right and even in the mirror match so yeah because, i was gonna say <laughs> like <laughs> yeah so like in the mirror match you're both doing 140 to each other they because of the mm -hmm. shred ability but I think this is cool because, like, if you liked Alolan Vulpix, if you thought that deck was cool with Arceus, but the problem with that deck is it had to attack, and then if you were to switch it out and boss it back up somehow, like, that all goes away. With this, Especially with Prime Catcher in format, that's pretty right. easy. So with this one, the interesting thing about this is because of the item we'll eventually get to, you mm -hmm. could see what your opponent is playing, see what's on their board, and then basically switch all of your Ogre Pawns out to this, and not leave your opponent any options to boss around it. And I think mm -hmm. that is where this one gets really interesting, right? Like you can kind of mid game, give your opponent like a switcheroo and then they're like, ah, oh no. <laughs> really just mistake. like forcing, like really just forcing your opponent to entirely change up their game plan, yep. right? On a moment's notice and really just react because a lot of Pokemon in my opinion is who makes less mistakes um and that's kind of generally any card game that you talk about who makes less mistakes and so having this sort of 180 pivot 
in game plan and strategies that probably a lot of people aren't prepared for is going to cause a lot of mistakes. Like you can just get ahead by that difference in game plan. Moving on to the dark type Pokemon. Um, I'm looking here, seeing if there's but anything. there's only a few there's only a few dark type Pokemon, and I don't really know don't if you really there's... need yeah, to I talk about any of them. I don't think there's any that are particularly interesting. Have a look for yourself, viewers. We're skipping the darks though, because the, the dark type Pokemon are not not that interesting. The only set. The only one that I would briefly mention at all is the Brute Bonnet. Three Dark Energies does 50 plus damage, 50 more damage for each damage counter on your opponent's active Pokemon. Could I mean, 50 is a large number, so you sure. could do some stuff, especially if you're sort of spread deck. But with three Dark Energies and no like colorless uh, options in the requirement could just be really tough um, for that. So, yeah, I mean, Hisui and Zoroark, Jake, um, mm -hmm. does that require Dark Energy? I think it uh does. no, it's too colorless. Oh, it's just colorless. Mm. Yeah, it's a it's a double turbo attachment. Well, I mean, I still think that that might be a deck that you play this in, because mm -hmm. you could play Hisui and Zoroark, which will put a bunch of damage counters very quickly, in theory, right? And you don't need a lot because if it does fifty more for each damage counter, all you really need are like three damage counters, four damage counters, and you're doing like two. Two damage counters from that stadium. I forget the name of the stadium off right. the top of my head. Uh, two damage counters for that is 150 damage through the Brute Bonnet's attack. Yeah. I think the only downside of this card really is it's three dark energy, which is so much. So Yeah, much. it's a lot. <laughs> You'd so, have to like play a turb or a uh, dark, dark patch type of thing Sada. or just like, yeah. yeah. Sada does help though. Um, this... This, I feel like, is a little bit more of, like, the ancient box mm -hmm. decks um, where, like, based on the number of ancient cards that you have in your discard pile, um, it could be something like a finisher if you are using Professor Sadas. That's, like, the best thing in my mind to pair this up with is, like, kind of a one of in there, just being able to, especially in the early game, right, when you're not doing a ton of damage with the uh, Roaring Moon, the little mm -hmm. baby Roaring Moon, and you just chip damage a Pokemon, you can come in later with the Brute Bonnet and just, like, kind of finish it off overall. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, something to keep in mind if you uh, mm -hmm. are already playing ancient box-type stuff. Yeah. For the uh, Metal-type, Jake, what's the first one that was on your radar? I'm not going to talk about the abilities or anything on this one. I just want to shout out Akira Agawa for doing a fantastic art on the Heatran. Uh, this card is insane. This card is oh, beautiful. Wow. It's awesome. Yeah, it is an incredible, incredible art. So if you're someone like me that loves collecting just like arts of specific creators or specific cards, uh, this one's this one. Put this one on your list because this card is awesome. <laughs> Um, That's all I'll say about that one. <laughs> I think I think the metal Pokemon here, like the only one I'll mention, Rev of Room, it has one attack, mm -hmm. uh, metal colorless colors. You do 100 damage, you flip a coin until you get tails, you do 100 free Cheds. I know some people love these types of decks, right? Where you just, it's all up to chance. So I'll just call that out if you're that kind of person. <laughs> Which <laughs> you know? one is it? Rev of Room. Oh, the, the three uh, energy cost attack. Yeah, yes, yeah. yes. So, you know. Mm -hmm. Go off, go off, Tri flip some heads, get get a get a <laughs> weighted off. dice, and uh, and win. <laughs> mm -hmm. Go off and flip some heads. So the next two cards that I want to talk about are in well, it's really three cards in combination with each other. We're going to talk about the Dragapult line now. So you have your okay. Dreepy in there. It's a seventy HP Dragon type Pokemon uh, attacks that aren't really relevant. It's not like the Froakie where you know you get other Pokemon to put on your bench and stuff like that. They're just vanilla damage type attacks. The line specifically plays Fire and Psychic. So the uh, Mela Mila, yeah. what's her name? Mila, the supporter that we mentioned earlier, definitely used in this deck or an option to use in this deck that you want to dig out of your bulk the dracloak though is one of the more important cards in this line similar to the gardevoir right with the curlia having a really really good stage one ability the dracloak as well is really nice 90 hp dragon type stage one with the ability how do you say that word reconnaissance raid 
reconnaissance raid. I would not have said that <laughs> my first try. Once during your turn, you may look at the top two cards of your deck and put one of them into your hand. Put the other card at the bottom of your deck. So a draw kind of engine similar yeah. to the Curlia. You only get to keep one card, but it's a no cost essentially type of thing like with the curly you have to discard a card from your hand to get those two cards with the dracloak you just turn it sideways and then you get to see <laughs> the two cards so really really good overall once this deck gets going and once you maybe do some evolutions with like tm evolution things like that you really really start going on this deck and it really gets really really oppressive and then once you're ready you can evolve into the dragapult ex stage two 320 terra dragon type pokemon has two attacks one colorless jet headbutt for 70 damage very you know reminiscent of dragon pole just like a really cheap <laughs> easy you know kind of like interesting amount of damage uh, to have as a potential option if you don't get your stuff off to be able to attack and you need to kind of quote unquote wall up. But the second attack is the one that really people are talking about for fire and psychic. So two energies, one each fire and psychic. You do phantom dive, 200 damage, put six damage counters on your opponent's bench Pokemon in any way you'd like. So you thought the Dragapult from Rebel Clash was good? <laughs> Uh, this one is also really good. Dragapult getting another really, really good card. Yep, and I would say to anybody who didn't play a couple of years ago when Dragapult VMAX was a thing, check mm -hmm. out, you know, some gameplay. There's some toured gameplay out there. He was really, he really enjoyed the deck, played it a lot. Um, and that'll give you a sense of how you should pilot this deck, right? Like, mm -hmm. okay, the goal, 200 damage is not quite enough to knock things out, but 200 damage plus six damage counter setup is really good, right? So you can like, basically you pick your prizes at the beginning of the game. And then you say, okay, that's gonna be my line to winning the game. I'll put 200 here, six there. I'll boss something up, put 200 on the new thing that I put six on before and six on the old thing. And most likely between that and maybe a couple of other damage modifiers, you're taking all of those at once, right? That's sort of especially, your Especially with the introduction of like the Ogre Pond deck, with the introduction of the Greninja deck. Um, the 200 damage is nice because you're probably not dying, right, on a one-turn attack from several of these decks. Now, we still have, you know, things like the Chin Pao in format, you know, the Dialga in format. Like, some of these decks can do one-hit KOs, but with the introduction of these new decks and spreading out those kind of uh, decks that we have thinner, theoretically uh the dragapult is nice um because in the exchange you're kind of doing more damage because you're spreading that damage out like you were talking about you know doing that setup damage so dragapult also really good not weak to anything yeah. i think that's something worth noting very common in dragon type pokemon now that fairy is gone sean do you remember what fairy types are uh, it's oh, been so huh? long <laughs> huh <laughs> Uh, let's get you to bed grandpa you know oh, like uh, fairy types used to be so good I, uh, I will anyways say, it's it's about time that there was a I, I think that they're like a really good dragon deck in this new era dragon mm -hmm. bolt seems to be finally that that one dragon type that's really going to do well and yeah are you what do you mean that finally what, what, we, what have you, you not remembered garatina v star oh that's true that's true that's a dragon type right. dragon types have been right. good well whatever my point is i think that like the well but giratina is only 280 hp i think seeing something that hits over that 300 mark that doesn't have yeah. weakness, right like yeah. what's one shotting this chin Pao. uh yeah just like chin pow and dialga if it gets all the if if the Matang yeah, survive, like twelve energy or what? Well, yeah, it's got yeah. If the Matang survive, oh my but, gosh! But if you're playing Dragapult, right, the Matangs don't survive. <laughs> yeah, they. I mean, they they die on the second turn because you put six on, and, and four, they're and like two. ninety HP. Uh, I think they're ninety HP Pokemon. One hundred HP. Still, it, two Still. Uh, two attacks is yeah. tough. So, but. So yeah, I mean, hey, get your Dragapults. And then also, um, I, are people playing this with Zatu as well to accelerate some psychic energy and get some draw? 
I think they're playing this. I, I believe so. There is at least one stream match with the Dragapult, and it's actually a Drapult, Dragapult, Greninja matchup. Mm. I remember from the Champions League stream, which is very interesting of a matchup overall, I feel like. So uh, definitely go watch that if you're interested in that. But uh, yes, I do remember them playing the Zatu to yeah. be able to accelerate the energy, draw cards, right? Your main draw engine is your Dracloaks, but you do have to evolve into the Dragapult. So having another uh, kind of Pokemon that can draw cards in the Zatu is really, really nice overall. But it's not the only really good dragon Pokemon, <laughs> Sean, in, in this set. Another great dragon pokemon in the tatsugiri our final pre-release promo and i am so happy that this is getting a pre-release promo yep this card, another art version sean talk about the card sorry i mean no i was gonna say this card is like it feels like jirachi's spiritual successor from like the yeah. team up era uh the ability attract customers once during your turn if this pokemon is in the active you may look at the top six cards of your deck reveal a supporter you find there put it into your hand shuffle the others back into your deck. So for those of you who didn't play during old time team up Jirachi era, Jirachi had an ability where you looked at the top five and you could put any trainer that you found there. But most of the time, at least with decks that you played it with, you you were looking for Welder, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. And then with this Tatsugiri, you can look for any supporter that, that matters. You get to look one deeper. And with one retreat cost, that rescue board is effectively, you know, a skateboard reborn in many ways. So I, I think that this Tatsugiri promo um, will probably be the most sought after. And <clears throat> I don't know if it will be nearly as expensive as Jirachi was, but it might get up there if this sees it's play in a number of decks. It's definitely going to see play, and it's definitely a really, really good option. Just basically like a free Poke Gear. Um, the really, really good looking at the top six cards, too, in comparison to something like the Mew VMAX or the Jirachi, like you mentioned, which is top five. Yep. Um, so really, really good overall has a couple different really cool arts in it as well with the pre-release promo and the art rare. And then also just a little uh, note for you, Sean, and anybody else who's made it uh, this far in the podcast listening to us. Hatsugiri's name in Japanese is Sharitasu, I believe is how you pronounce it, which literally means standing on sushi rice. Because <laughs> if you look at Tatsugiri, Tatsugiri is standing on sushi rice. So little little fun fact, shout out OKJ OK Love for mentioning it the other day when he was opening up uh, Mask of Change. Uh, Learn that little tidbit there. I think it's funny. That's absurd <laughs> it's awesome it's just a great name for tatsugiri the more you know oh man um going now into the colorless pokemon the normal typing whatever you want to call them mm -hmm. um the first one i think i'll stop at is the blissey ex a lot um, of people are excited about this card yeah blissey ex stage one 300 hp the ability happy switch once during your turn you may move a basic energy from one of your pokemon to another of your pokemon Really cool. Um, basically, it's an energy switch that you get to do once for each Blissey. And then for three colorless, you return 180 damage. No slouch. Two shots, anything. You may draw mm -hmm. cards until you have six in your hand. So you always, you're trying to make sure that at the end of your turn, you always have a full grip, so to speak. Um, but Jake, why are people so excited about this card? People are excited because not only with that happy switch, you know, being able to move a basic energy from anywhere, right? It's not saying that you have to do it from Blissey to another Pokemon. This is any Pokemon anywhere on the field. So any type of energy acceleration that goes to a specific type of Pokemon that is not a normal type, you can use Happy Switch to be able to move that energy over to wherever you want. And then doing, like you said, like a pretty decent amount of damage, right? In 180 and having different options in terms of some special energy, right? Like um, what there's the energy that's like, it can't be affected by effects of an attack. So like Giratina's mm, V-Star power, yeah, Mist Energy, thank you. Mist Energy, having stuff like that in format can really just put a big 
300 HP Pokemon in the active and your opponent has to hit it multiple times in order to uh, be able to take a knockout on that, especially with Sharon's care, right? Mm -hmm. Sharon's care or Professor Turo's scenario, being able to pick up this Blissey, right? And especially with Sharon's care, being able to pick up the energy attached to it as well, being able to potentially reattach the energy in some way or with multiple Blissey EXs, right, in play, using that ability multiple times to be able to chain these attackers. And then the return, just being able to draw cards until six is something that just overall has a lot of people excited. I don't know if it's going to be best deck in format in terms of the uh, meta, but I do know that you know, it's just it's going to be viable, right? It's going to be a lot of fun that people are having. I'm trying to real quickly. Uh, somebody did also, I saw, post a uh, Japan list of it with the blissey with the monkey dory mm, right yep with it that little guy uh with that ability that i mentioned is nice in gardevoir so uh, especially with energy lotto something like that and turbo energize that tm with exp shares and that a spec with the energies or whatever um could just be really interesting overall i'm not necessarily saying that it's incredible but it could be one of the more cheaper decks that you can buy and build and you know do decently at, especially at the local level yeah 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 i mean i do think sharon's care right now is a card that should see more play um the mm -hmm. fact that we have missed energy and yeah like maybe they were just waiting for like the right colorless pokemon um because i think wigglytuff ex as fun as it is the requirement to play a supporter every turn in order to get a decent amount of damage is pretty rough. And then this mm -hmm. Blissey maybe fixes that a little bit, right? Where it's like, hey, the odds that you're going to do 300, pretty low. So your only way to knock me out most of the time is going to be an effect. So missed energy mm -hmm. stopping that. So yeah, just chain some Sharon's cares together and then you are good. We're good. You can't do anything to me. Reminder on the monkey Dory in case you don't remember, because we have talked about like a hundred yep. cards in this uh, in this <laughs> podcast. If you have any dark energy attached to the monkey Dory, you can move three damage counters from one of your opponent to one of your opponent's Pokemon. So yep. kind of having like a, a survival kind of deck, kind of as you were mentioning, like moving damage counters off of it that you hit and then also using Sharon's care to get even more damage counters off and have more of a survivability in the uh in the deck it is nice actually because sharon's care i'm just not thinking through it sharon's care mm -hmm. is as your supportive return doesn't draw you cards but the attack draws you up to six so it's kind of mm -hmm. like oh that's cool like so you if you do this right if you play it right with the right set of cards like you kind of get a supporter at the end of your turn every turn too so anyways i just thought about that i was like that's cool yeah it's um, a it's a really interesting kind of thing um, are there any other Pokemon that you wanted to talk about? Um, Let's talk about Blood Moon Ursaluna EX, the final Pokemon that we can talk about in this set. Has the ability Veterans Technique. If this Pokemon's Blood Moon attack, or this Pokemon's Blood Moon attack costs colorless less for each prize card your opponent has taken and does 240 damage with a, if your opponent has taken no prizes, five colorless energies right so at the end of the game it can be free right if they've taken five prizes in even more i mean like four you know it's only a one energy attack for three it's a two energy attack really realistic to be able to utilize i know a lot of people are excited about this ex as well um being able to do a ton of damage with a really nice ability yeah, I will also say 260 HP is big, right? Like, yes, 260 HP, basic, normal type Pokemon. You know, we do have cards that can hit that, but, you know, it's it's, it's a lot. It's a lot. So Yeah, I mean, it's like a Radiant Charizard kind of thing yeah. um, where at certain points in the game, you know, you can go ahead and just slide this guy in and just do a bunch of damage. Yep. But that is it for the Pokemon, Jake. Mm -hmm. um, question now then is... What kind of trainer cards are we getting with all of these amazing, new, interesting, whatever Pokemon? So going through them, I think we usually go through almost all the trainers unless they're reprints. So we won't mm -hmm. spend nearly as much time on all of them, but we'll, we'll quickly go over them. 
First There's one, some interesting ones in here. Yes. First one here, Bug Catcher set. It's an item. Look at the top seven. Reveal up to two in any combination of grass, Pokemon, and basic grass energy you find there. Put them into your hand. Then you shuffle the rest back into your deck. So kind of like, it's cool. It's like, you know, it's like a better Great Ball, honestly. If you're playing, um, if you're playing Great Ball, if you're playing a grass deck and you want to be able to find those evolution Pokemon better, Bug Catcher set is going to be a pretty good, I think, item card for the Ogre Pond deck for even that Blossom, probably, probably just Ogre Pond deck that we were talking about. I think this goes into there as well, is my guess. It yeah, just really any type of main grass decks that maybe you want to utilize the uh, the Ogre Pond um, or even something like the Arios, Ar Aria Dos deck. Um, it's just a really interesting option for you. Um, the next one is a supporter. It's Caretaker. It's bad. There's always a few of these in every set. Draw this two one is the interesting one, though, it's, in my opinion. You're right. It's interesting. But I don't know why they did this. But Caretaker, draw two cards. Then, if Community Center is in play, shuffle this Caretaker back into your deck. So Community Center <laughs> is a stadium that we'll talk about here in a second. But I don't know, just like really, like again, with these, like they're trying out these new interactions, seeing how they yeah. influence the game. A lot of these interactions that we talk about, and we've seen this through the last couple sets, right? You know, we've talked about how like this card is like just interesting and in how it works. Like they're trying out these new effects on these not great Pokemon to see how the meta or like these not great cards to see like how the meta reacts to it. And I'd be really curious if we're still a podcast like five years from now, <laughs> you know, like remembering like this caretaker, for example, and in the next five years being like, okay, did they revisit this effect of like, if there's a stadium, shuffle it back in deck instead of discarding it. Um, instead and like having it be like a draw four, right. Yeah. Instead of a draw two, it's it, it almost feels like they're testing with like purposefully not great cards to yeah. to like not get off card with or off guard with something like a broken ability, right? Or a broken effect, you know, trying to trying to like continuously go forward until it's at a good enough power level to be like in the meta. I'd be really curious if that was their direction that they're going for with cards like this. Yeah, no, it is interesting, right? Like cuz Mm -hmm. this would be something for me where I would almost want to make this an item. Like, yeah. it, it, like I really think that if this was an item where you just draw two and it's, it's encouraging you to play community center as your main stadium to get the effect mm -hmm. of putting it back in, like that would be really interesting to me. Cause I'm like, Oh dang. Like that's, I do see though, like it could be a problem because you could maybe get into a loop where you could, if you shuffle it back in, you draw the two, you shuffle it back in. If you can draw another way, you draw it again, you shuffle it and you can just draw your whole deck almost. That would be a problem. Yeah, it's, I think it's just interesting how they're like, yeah. all of these super unique effects are on not great cards. So I wonder like what their plans are in the future. But the next one is interesting. Carmine, a new supporter. Now this is a unique supporter. Um, something that we've kind of seen, um, in the past and being revisited in a new iteration. If you go first, you may play this card during your first turn. So we've seen, especially in this new era of, if you're going first, you can't play a supporter, right? With the new supporter rule. Um, this one is defying that. I think the Gita also, the Gita you can play on your first turn, Mm -hmm. from obsidian flames i think I is another one that did this that didn't see play too much but this one this carmine if you use it on your first turn or any other turn outside of that discard your hand and draw five cards so i don't i mean just being able to draw another five especially on your very first turn we saw how cards like lily from ultra prism yeah. right were so good um having like an extra being able to play on your first turn effect even though lily 
was in an era where you could play supporters turn one and had like draw more cards if you were playing it on turn one in comparison to other things. So Carmine could be something I don't know exactly. I'll have to rewatch the Champions League, um, but could be something that we see a lot of in this format. I, again, I don't know if Japan is playing this card, but I, I if I was a turbo deck in any capacity, like if I'm Dialga, maybe, mm-hmm. or if I'm a ride on or, or whatever, or future box. There's a part of me that says, okay, I don't play research anymore. I play Carmine because the upside is I want it in my hand, turn one going first. Right. Mm -hmm. And then if you can do this, draw five, we don't see this card played as much right now, but squawkabilly as well being a card you can play. So there is a world in which you can really power through your deck on the first turn going first. Now that we haven't really seen since before the supporter rule change. Mm -hmm. so i I would be really interested to see if some decks take this and say my my draw supporters are going to be iono and carmine that's it so it's just really it's really curious because i remember um talking about like professor's research and stuff i remember chip ritchie was mentioning this during the indianapolis uh regional live stream where he had a good conversation with pablo mesa tablemon saying like you know we're in an era right now in a format where one of the best draw supporters ever right in professor's research discard your hand and draw seven is not really seeing a lot of play in decks right now i mean if you look at indianapolis regionals there's not a ton of professor's research out there right a card that used to be a four of and a lot of decks are really just one ofs two ofs now um if anything in a lot of these decks so carmine carmine will be interesting um, I, I like the idea of bringing it back. Jake, the next one is that community center that caretaker was referencing. It's a stadium mm-hmm. once during each player's turn. If that player played a supporter card from their hand, they may heal 10 damage from each of their Pokemon. So I, I feel like, does this have a similar effect as tropical? Be- no, no. Tropical beach was the drawing. Tropical beach Ugh. drew cards and then ended your turn. What's the, what's the one that, um, People were talking about playing with a guard of war that would heal 10 from each of your Pokemon. I know which card you're talking about, but I don't remember the name. Maybe it's champion. Because it Fest- didn't actually Festival see a lot of play. I don't know. Maybe it was like a, but it was, a, it was another card. So I think this community center is, I it's don't bad. think it will. Yeah. I don't think it will see <laughs> much play. Like there's a world in which maybe a guard of war deck plays this to fix math, but otherwise I don't, I don't think it sees play. I think it's one of those things that you really have to care if your opponent, like if you can't get rid of the stadium, like through the uh, Roaring Moons, right? The Roaring Moon EX attack, for example, or the uh, Ting Lu that you talked about earlier in this set. Um, If you can't get rid of the stadium, then you have to be all right with your opponent using it as well, because they definitely will use it. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. Um, But the next one is another uh, supporter, Cook. Heal 70 from uh, your active. It's a reprint, so Mm -hmm. nothing new here. Doesn't really see play. (laughs) Only used, I think, in the Mewtwo V Union, I think, is the only deck that we saw it in, or Mew V Max, uh, one of those two. Um, So not too much. We can move on to the reprint of Enhanced Hammer. This card has special energy attached to one of your opponent's Pokemon. This item card has been good, you know, in past formats, probably going to be decent in this one as well. Um, in terms of special energies, though, I'm trying to think like Chin Pao doesn't play it. Lugia. Charizard doesn't play special energies. I guess Lugia, but Lugia, I mean, I, I overhyped Lugia, I will admit, entering post rotation and this format. So like, I don't know. This might not see. I mean, because enhanced hammer was prevalent last when zorak ex or i mean zorak v or zorak gx got so many zoraks yeah zorak gx with double term or uh whatever yeah. the double colorless energy was in format so um that's not around anymore i think the only deck that i think currently that would care is a deck that wants to take a one hit knockout without doing damage and mm-hmm. so Maybe Giratina V Star if it's not playing the Arceus build. Maybe that or maybe Roaring Moon plays this to get rid of Mist Energy. Yeah. 
And that's that's I think this it, is definitely right a missed energy counter. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So and look, there might be some matchups where you just oh so look look looky, this is great. Like I happen to go up against a, a turbo iron hands deck and I can get rid of their double turbo and it's stuck in the active and can't attack next turn. Yeah, you'll get mm -hmm. a couple of situations like that, but I think really right now it's a missed energy thing. It's really, really nice just to have in format overall. The Fable Flute is another item card. Reveal the top five cards of your opponent's deck and put any number of basic Pokemon you find there on your opponent's bench. They shuffle all the other cards back into their deck. Control! Yeah, yeah. But, I mean, this is such a control card. Um, this is awesome. I, I don't know. I, like put any number so i guess you don't have to put but this would be kind of fun if you have like oh you're playing a control deck oh you don't want mana fee let's throw that down you don't want Jirachi? yeah i you mean you know you have, a, you have a deck that plays a lot of support pokemon yeah. right i mean you can like the top five cards you could put a luminion down there right yeah. luminion effect doesn't proctor you can put the jirachi in there you can put the mana fee in there yeah. um you can even Radiant even put Greninja. something like yeah, you could put a Radiant Greninja. You could put any Pokemon in there to just fill up the bench, right? Theoretically, and this probably statistically does not happen often, but is possible in a sense. If your opponent doesn't have any bench Pokemon and you reveal five basic Pokemon, you can just put them on the bench. All of them. You could. You could. Hopefully they're not useful. But yeah, like. I do Yeah, think like, that, but it it's yeah. cool. Yeah, for Snorlax Control, one of the big strategies was like, don't overbench, right? Yeah. Only put down one attacker, maybe two or whatever, and load them up with energy and force your opponent to like not be able to deal with it. And then people played Erica's Hospitality and at the time, Echoing Horn. Yeah, like, you know, great for that. You know, I think that's all you have to say about that's what this card is for. <laughs> Yeah, and it's an item card, too. So it's not like you're using your supporter for turn or anything like that. So just really, really good. <laughs> uh, the next card on the list is another stadium, Festival Grounds. Each Pokemon that has an energy attached can't be affected by any special conditions. Remove any special conditions affecting those Pokemon. I don't think that this card will currently see play. It's cool. It's interesting. But mm -hmm. there's not that many decks that care about special conditions there's only one deck really i feel like that utilizes this card and it's if you specifically want to play that festival lead ability a deck right mm -hmm. that allows you to kind of attack twice uh with like the diplin and stuff because remember with the festival lead ability you do have to have a festival grounds in play so the stadium does have to be on the field in order to get the benefits of that ability so true, true. Um, you have to use it in combination. Yeah, that's a very good point. So, yeah, it's like you're kind of forced to play a bad card. <laughs> so. Yeah, but uh, yeah, it's a fun deck. <laughs> yeah, it's good, though. Have fun. Have fun, everyone. <laughs> um, yeah, have fun. What's this next one, Jake? <laughs> this next one is a tool card, Handy Circulator. If this Pokemon this card is attached to is your active Pokemon and is damaged by a an opponent's attack, even if it's knocked out, move an energy attached to the attacking Pokemon to one of your opponent's benched Pokemon. So we have like EXP share in format, right? Or the heavy baton that moves energies from your field to Pokemon. Now we have kind of the reverse where you're moving energies from your opponent's Pokemon. So an interesting kind of like controly type card to where like if your opponent is running low on energies or whatever and has two Pokemon in play, right? You can have this handy circulator and move those energies around if you're not expecting something like E-Switch or the Blissey EX, you know, ability. Yeah. I forget what it's called that moves an energy. But um, yeah, definitely, definitely kind of a, a, a deter your game plan kind of card. I think this is actually pretty good in the Blissey deck. Right. If mm -hmm. you assume your po your opponent can't knock you out, and if you're going to share and scare anyways, you could just keep picking this tool up, putting it back onto the new Blissey, and just moving all of your opponent's energy onto something like a Manaphy. Mm -hmm. You know, where you're like, what are you going to do? So it's it's interesting. It's a cool. It's another control card. Lots of control cards thus far. Oh yeah. So the next one is Hassle, uh, which is a supporter. You can play this card only if any of your Pokemon were knocked out. So very Raihan ability. 
Mm -hmm. uh, look at the top eight cards of your deck, put three of them into your hand, shuffle the other cards back into your deck. I don't think this will see any play, Jake. I think you, you have don't know because like you can only play it if your opponent has knocked out one of your Pokemon. So but Raihan was played, but Raihan lets you get any card out of your deck and you also attached an energy. Yeah. And this is like. Like but this is putting three cards in your hand, like three cards in your hand, looking at the top eight. That's not like a bad effect at all. And no. they don't get discarded like with the uh, Hapu or whatever the new supporters called. That's like Explorer's Hapu. Guidance. Explorer's Guidance. Thank you. Um, so like, I don't I mean, I'm not going to sit here and say this is a good card or like a great one or like every single deck should play this. But I don't think it will be like obsolete <laughs> entirely. Um, not entirely. Yeah, putting three cards into your hand is a lot of cards, actually. Yeah, yeah. You, you look at the top eight, put three into your hand. It's it's not a bad effect. I just think to myself, like, mm -hmm. only looking at the top eight, so you get three of the top eight cards. So it's like, okay, well, unless I really need the cards in my hand, I'm like, mm -hmm. well, would I prefer to just play Iono and look at those top maybe five or six directly? Would I rather play research and get seven out of those eight instead of three? You know, it, it starts to get to this point where you're just kind of like, eh, I don't know. That That's my only thought. Maybe it sees play I will somewhere. say something that I think should see play in at least Dialga V-Star is the new A-Spec, Hyper Aroma. Sean, this A-Spec is an item card. Search your deck for up to three stage one Pokemon. Reveal them, put them in your hand, then shuffle your deck. Imagine grabbing three <laughs> Matangs and you can also grab a Dialga V-Star off of it. This is interesting in a concept like uh, the Dragapult deck, right? Because we talked mm -hmm. about how the Dracloaks are so good. A Gardevoir deck, right? Being able to grab three Curlias, yes. right? And go ahead and use those abilities. Specifically, Stage 1 Pokemon is really interesting on this a spec and i think it's a really really cool card to be able to do especially with arvin yeah. in the format right being able to arvin and then play this card to grab three evolutions stage one evolutions yeah it's cool I, it's I, this good. is a cool a spec yeah yeah i think in those heavy setup decks where you need a bunch of pokemon like gardevoir stage one specifically like a, a bunch of stage ones um I, I I fully agree. I think this is a great card. Pairs perfectly with Arvin. You don't have to discard your hand effectively with Ultra Balls. Yeah, you don't have to. It's not the mystery box. Right. So, yeah, I think um, if you're playing that kind of deck, this is probably now your go-to. You're just your go-to card, right? Also works with Irida. It does. You can just go get this. Um, Which is great for the Dragapult deck. Oh, my gosh. What? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, oh my gosh, this is cool. <laughs> All right, well, so that's one of the A specs. There's a few more in the set, but the next card is Jamming Tower. Pokemon mm -hmm. tool cards in play, both yours and your opponents, have no effect. So it's kind of, it, it's, a, it's an interesting stadium. It's really cool in certain decks. I think if you're playing a deck that you want to like shut down your opponent with an Iono or a Roxanne, and you're like, I need them not to get out of this with a Forest Seal Stone, this is good. Mm -hmm. If you need to make sure that your opponent can't, you know, get extra HP with a hero's cape or extra damage in with that other tool card. I don't know, though. I To me, like, I think this is a stadium that you play when you don't have any better stadiums to play. I think it's kind of a stadium that you play, too, when you're trying to get around your opponent's tool cards i don't think you can necessarily use this like if you're afraid of your opponent playing like a tm devo yeah right because i think of the i think of the tm evo devo you know all of those tms which this is really nice but i think this has to be something that you play for you on your yeah. turn um not necessarily uh to prevent your opponent from doing things if that makes sense um so a nice stadium, really cool. Like you said, of blocking for seal stone, you know, like I mentioned, the TM Devo, Evo, Energy, Turbo, Wiser, uh, Crisis yeah. Punch, all that stuff. Um, Heroes Cape, stuff yeah. like that. Um, but I just it's missing something in it. 
But yeah. the next supporter is Kieran, and it has two different effects that you can use, kind of like Serena, choosing one of the two. You can either switch your active Pokemon with one of your bench Pokemon, similar to Tate and Liza, yeah. right, from Celestial Storm, way back when, really nice card that saw a lot of play. And then the second effect that you can use instead during this turn, your Pokemon's attacks do 30 more damage to your opponent's active Pokemon EX or active Pokemon V. So those uh, multi-prize rule box Pokemon, you can do a little bit of extra damage on it. Yeah, I think this will see some play. Um, I think mm -hmm. having those modal effects, especially if one of the modes is switching, a switch effect, mm -hmm. there will be games where you're like, I don't think this is a four of, I think it's a one or maybe a two of in this specific mm -hmm. deck that you also play Palpad in that deck yeah it's definitely kind of like a tech-ish card yeah but it's gonna be it's gonna really i think it's gonna win people some games because your opponent might be trying to trap something in the active and then you know hey i have a pal pad i can go grab another kieran or you're like oh i'm just a little shy on damage but then kieran comes in to save the day with that extra 30 um you know i think it's a, it's a pretty decent one of supporter honestly I think it's really interesting in something like Dragapult, right? We talked about Dragapult doing 200 damage. And then especially when you talk about potentially the Chin Pao matchup, right? Mm -hmm. Chin Pao has 220 and could be a really tough matchup, not only because of the Greninja, you know, kind of spread, but also the fact that it can just one shot your Dragapults, right? With those big attacks. So playing something like Kieran. Uh, allows you to continuously put those damage counters onto different places on your opponent's bench, but also one hit KO which in pal. Yeah. Cause you go to 230 damage. So huh. it's good. It's good. Good stuff. Yeah. <laughs> you draw a lot of cards, so uh, yeah. you'll probably be able to see it. <laughs> uh, next one here, Lana's care put up to three in any combination of Pokemon that don't have a rule box and basic energy cards from your discard pile into your hand. Mm -hmm. um you know i think that there's a world in which maybe like an ancient box deck really likes this card um you can get those you know attackers and maybe a couple energy they play the um superior energy retrieval just for that purpose so i think this might be yeah. better uh other option here though i actually think this is going to be a glc all-star because no oh Pokemon yeah i think that this is definitely a glc all-star so like and it works with any deck uh any type of pokemon so you know, if you, if you like GLC too, put a uh, grab a Lana's Care, um, and just find a find a deck that it makes sense in. Yeah, really, just good if you get aggressive really early and want to get those Pokemon back, maybe to chain some attackers, specifically some of your more important attackers in GLC to constantly have them and put them back in basics. And uh, yeah, it could just be really cool overall, um, like you were saying in decks like that, but. Moving into level ball, Love, or I'm sorry, level not ball. level ball. Dang it. I wish <laughs> level wish. ball was coming back. That was a cool card. Love ball, a item card, another Pokeball. Search your deck for a Pokemon with the same name as one of your opponent's Pokemon in play. Reveal it, put it in your hand, then shuffle your deck. I think this has the same. Didn't we? We talked about this. Doesn't this have the same effect? It has um, a similar effect as friend ball yeah yes, and i was like why more, didn't you just reprint friend, friend ball well, it's more specific than friend ball because friend ball is same yes type. this is same name i um, remember being angry and thinking that they were the same card and then being corrected and that they're not the same card <laughs> i i think love ball right now we can we can call it two names it's either radiant greninja ball or the barrel ball mm -hmm. those are the yeah. two pokemon that because also like radiant greninja you can get with a nest ball right but like, oh, I'm going to love ball for a barrel instead of having to discard two cards. Yes, please. Like, yeah, you really you would really only want to play this. I feel like if you struggled finding Pokemon, like maybe you don't have a bunch of like Pokemon search options. Uh, maybe you're playing the most popular deck in format, right? Like if you're playing yeah. Charizard and Charizard is still 20% of the meta, maybe you play this card um, to be able, because you expect a lot of Charizard mirrors, right? Yeah, you can go um, Arvin for a Love Ball instead of an Ultra Ball and go grab Pidgeot or Charizard off of that. And then all of a sudden yeah. it's like, okay, cool. Like I, I have more resources still. Yeah, just again, you know, it's either Radiant Greninja or if you're playing the most popular deck in format. Yep. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, 
Next card here, though, is another supporter called Lucian. Uh, this one is very similar to Marnie. Each player shuffles their hand, puts it on the bottom. If either player put any cards on the bottom of their deck this way, each player flips a coin. If heads, that player draws six. If tails, they draw three. So it's like a weird Marnie, and I will remind people that Marnie has the ruling of if neither you nor your opponent put any cards on the bottom of your deck after this card is played, neither of you draw anything. So... <laughs> yeah, it's like really cool if you had Bibberol, you know, yeah. you'd be able to like, hi, you can't draw, but I'll draw five cards, right? right? Through Bibberol so, at least. I mean, I wonder though if Lucian... Um... If, if nobody would have cards after this, it may be that you can't play a card for no effect effect. I can't remember if Marnie. No, because you, you could play. You Marnie could play Marnie. Card, even if you yeah. either of you had a card in hand afterwards. Yeah, you, you could play Marnie. It would just be that nothing happens. Yeah. Unless it was bugged on. Uh, no, I think you're right. I think it's online. So this is cool. I don't know kind of fun if you're if you're if you want to play a less intense version of like an iona or a roxanne where you're like i'm here for for good times i'm here to flip some coins lucian's mm -hmm. great yeah flipping coins is fun uh in the game <laughs> lucky helmet is coming back it was last printed in ancient origin uh so it's been a while since the X and Y era, a tool card, if this Pokemon, this card is attached to is in the active spot and is damaged by an attack from your opponent's Pokemon, even if knocked out, draw two cards. Good. I think yeah. this is really good in Rev of Room. Oh my gosh, you put like four of these on and you draw eight cards. Yeah, if you, or like, you know, or if you put a couple on, because I play Rev of Room and I can tell you that drawing with Rev of Room was a problem. Uh, <laughs> yeah so, if you want to play a good meme deck especially i think lucky helmet's fun um, yeah and because it happens after your opponent's attack even an iono or a roxanne means that like okay you're still gonna draw cards even if it gets knocked mm -hmm. out it doesn't matter so i don't know it could see some it could see some niche play here and there doesn't prevent damage in <laughs> any sense doesn't like make you stronger but Allows you to draw cards. Could be good. It could be good, especially if you do something like, uh, you know, how Charizards were playing Cleffa for a little bit. Yep. One Tord played it. Like, if you have a Cleffa in the active, just attach a Lucky Helmet onto it, draw seven through its attack, and then once it gets knocked out, that draw two more. That's actually really good. I like that, Jake. That's cool. Yeah, if you if you purposely have a kind of support Pokemon in the game because it is a tool card so off of arvin you can find this tool card um if you're not playing like four seal stone type decks things like that so i don't know, could could see some niche play so the next one is the item card we've been referencing all episode called yeah <laughs> now we're finally talking about it an hour and a half later it's called ogre's mask so choose a pokemon mm -hmm. ex in your discard pile that has ogre pond in its name and switch it with one of your Pokemon EX in play that has Ogre Pond in its name. So it's kind of like Thornton, but just for Ogre Pond. Mm -hmm. um, any attached cards, damage counter, special condition, turns in play, and any other effects remain on the new Pokemon. So, mm -hmm. you know, it's like I said, it's literally Thornton or Ogre Pond as an item. That, that, that's what really you're nice. At. Especially when you talk about the uh, cornerstone, the the fighting type, rock type, whatever you want to call it, and then the wellspring, the water type that have kind of like the uh, the one actual type of energy and then two colorless energy requirements. Yeah. Uh, being able to switch those into what you want can just be really nice um, in there for different things, especially also if maybe, you know, you don't even have to have a bunch of energies on the ogre pond to do the switch. If you get stuck with the wrong ogre pond at the beginning of the game in the active, you can actually switch it for the, uh, teal mask one, the grass type one to then be able to accelerate energies later. So, um, really interesting tool card overall, or I'm sorry, item card, item card. Yeah. I don't know why I called it a tool card, <laughs> probably because it's all about masks. Yeah, it, it kind of seems toolish, but... Yes. The next card here is a cool supporter that is reminiscent of one of the oldest Pokemon cards, Jake. Perrin, reveal up to two Pokemon from your hand, put them into your deck. If you do, search your deck for up to that many Pokemon, reveal them, put them into your hand. So you basically get to switch up to two Pokemon from your hand with Pokemon that are in your deck. 
This reminds me of um, there's like a Pokemon, Pokemon communication. Oh, it's, there's Pokemon, Pokemon communication. communication. Yeah, is, is is a one for one, not a two for two. But Pokemon Trader, mm -hmm. which came out in base set, I believe, might have done. Oh, you're talking Pokemon. about old old card. Yeah, yeah. So, so, it, but it is. It's basically a double Pokemon communication as a supporter. Mm -hmm. I. It's a hard one to know exactly where this goes in terms of a deck. I mean, maybe it sees play in um in Lugia decks. I think it could also see play in. You know, any evolution deck where you're playing a bunch of Pokemon, but you need specific ones at the right time. The problem, though, mm -hmm. is like it's a supporter and like, you know, you need it on that specific turn. It's, it's a weird one. I think it has utility, but I think it's hard to know where it lives. You have to have a lot of support from the Pokemon or item cards that you have to be able to effectively continuously pump out your game plan overall if you play this Perrin. Um I I I really wish they would just reprint Pokemon Communication maybe someday. Yeah, yeah. Next card, the Rifer is not good. Uh, just just jumping in, Rifer. Yeah, just bad. jumping into it like Rifer, not that good. Look at the top five. Discard any number of cards there. Put the others back in order. I think it's just a worse Explorer's Guidance, right? Because I mean, it saves resources a little bit compared to the Explorer's Guidance, where you're forced to discard like the rest of the cards that you don't take but like i don't know i mean like i i don't I, again unless you're trying to save resources <laughs> your resources are that important just don't play this card moving into the a specs moving in sean <laughs> moving in we have scoop up cyclone uh, i talked about this card a little bit earlier just a really really good a spec item card that allows you to pick up any card and all cards attached to it you know could be good for those decks that don't get one hit ko'd by like literally anything or maybe sort of those wally -E kind of decks or being able to prevent a support pokemon from staying on the field or just picking up different pokemon like uh, curly of refinements right um, if you don't see your curly refinements, you can use one, use the ability, pick it up with scoop up cyclone and then put it on a different Ralts to be able to do it again. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think this is a really balanced card. Some decks will love this. Other decks will ignore it. Mm -hmm. Exactly. I think as a spec should be, it shouldn't be like there's two that are good and all of the rest are trash. So I think this is a great reprint, right? We talked about what cards mm -hmm. we would love to have seen reprinted. Um, and this is, this is a solid one, I think. This is a good one alongside the Master Ball, which I think we called yeah. here on the Metapod yeah. podcast. So uh, <laughs> excellent. But the next one, Sean's least favorite A spec of all time, as I titled a previous uh, podcast episode, the Secret Box. Secret Box, again, just to refresh you, if maybe you're new to the podcast or you don't exactly remember what this card is when we last talked about it, you can use this item card only if you discard three other cards from your hand. So a four card combo of discarding this card, the secret box, and then three other cards in your hand. Search your deck for an item card, a tool card, a supporter card, and a stadium card. So four cards for four cards, um, essentially. And could just be really really good i know sean had big like doomsday vibes in the episode that we did and i do think i do agree that this is think, a good card i think in the right deck right like similar yes. to the other cards it's a for the right deck it can be really powerful but then for the other decks it might do a whole lot of nothing and you'd rather have prime catcher or scoop up cyclone or one of the mm -hmm. other a specs we'll talk about in a second so this is yeah, it's just a really good either like setup card that you can play, um, especially because it's arvenable, right? Yes. Or a sort of like a find your last card needed to win the game, right? If you need to find a boss's order or you need to find, you know, the rare candy to evolve and attack and win um, or something of that sort. If you like it's either like a setup card or an end game card. Yep. Yep. Mm hmm. Uh, next a spec here though, is I think the, uh, what we are talking about is the stinker of the bunch. There's always one, uh, um, it's like a weird, <laughs> it's very it's, niche. Yeah, it's very niche. So this one is survival brace. If the Pokemon, the card is attached to as full HP and would be knocked out, uh, from an attack on your opponent's Pokemon, that Pokemon is not knocked out. And instead it's HP becomes 10. Then you discard this tool card. So, mm -hmm really good if you're trying to build either a tank deck 
Or I think if you're building a deck that maybe the prize math is what really matters and mm -hmm. it, it can sort of act like a, I, I need you to not take a prize this turn. Like there are decks that are like that, right? Single prize decks are often like that where it comes down to one turn difference. And there's a world in which a card like this is really good in that situation. But my feeling on it is like things like Lost Vacuum, uh, Jamming Tower, uh, even things like Boss's Order to just go around it. There's a few cards in the format, I think, that like make this card less interesting or less useful maybe than some of the other A specs if you only get to pick one. This card, in my opinion, is interesting if you play something like a small HP deck, right? If you have like multi prize Pokemon, like we talked about the Ogre Ponds being 210 HP, right? A very small number uh, that you will continuously play because those Ogre Ponds don't evolve into anything to get more HP. So, or just a single prize deck, kind of like you alluded to, if you have a single prize focused deck. Uh, allows you to have an extra turn with your attacker, not have your opponent take a prize card, but is something that can be countered through Lost Vacuum or Jamming Tower if your opponent plays that. Lost Vacuum, probably the more likely of the two uh, <laughs> in there, but not something that's out of the realm of scenarios. The last item tool or item A spec card, there's one more after this, that's in energy is unfair stamp reminiscent of the old reset stamp but with this one you can only play it if your opponent ko'd one of your opponent or one of your pokemon during your opponent's last turn so kind of like a revenge style raihan style hassle style that we talked about earlier each player shuffles their hand into their deck then if then you draw five cards and your opponent draws two cards so Something that we saw play in the Champions League. I think this and Secret Box all both saw play. So some stuff that is viable and we'll showcase you some decks uh, next week like we keep mentioning as well. Um, again, just a really, really good end game card uh, it, overall. Yeah, I mean, I think it doesn't even have to be end game, right? Like early game. Yeah, it could just be any game. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think, you know, my thought about this card is in i don't know how japanese decks are typically built but at least mm -hmm. american decks uh western decks i should say um there's a lot of bibarel in some of the top tier decks charizard and chen pao are good examples of that i think this deck it, it stocks g rise and fall with how much bibarel is played in a format right now because if your opponent has bibarel out playing this card does almost nothing i mean it shuffles their hand which like you know maybe they'll just draw bad cards but for the most part, they will have, you know, five cards at the start of their turn if they want. Um, mm -hmm. Without Bibarel, though, this card is crazy good because it can be an Iono even if your opponent has only taken one prize card. And so mm -hmm. it Iono's them down to two and like, oh my gosh, that's so good. So that's my opinion on it. I think it depends on how much Bibarel people are playing. It's like, and it also depends, like, if you're playing this card, it's a great, like, kind of, if you don't really need any other A spec. Yeah. Right? Like, if you don't need the scoop up Cyclone, you know, playing a lot of just support bench viabilities, if you're not uh, worried about the, uh, the hyper aroma, like we talked about earlier, mm -hmm. with finding those setup stage ones you know prime catcher you know you play a good amount of counter catcher or uh bosses orders things like that um this is just a really like good if i don't need anything else kind of card moving into the special energy we have two special energy today i think we can start mm -hmm. with the not a spec and then finish it off with the a spec the first one though boomerang energy provides colorless energy and if this card is discarded by the effect of an attack used by the Pokemon this card is attached to, attach this card from your discard pile to that Pokemon after attacking. So as the name implies, if you have to discard energy as part of your attack, the energy comes right back to that Pokemon after you are done attacking. So off the top, a great Pokemon to pair this with is the new Greninja EX. Mm -hmm. You got to discard energy, you may not need more than one, right? Like, so say you have um, a water, this, and something else. You can discard this and the something else, 
this comes right back and all you got to do is attach one more energy on the follow-up turn. So it's a really, I think it's a really cool energy. You don't have to rely on um, double turbo quite as much. It's a really cool card overall. I don't think it like saw a lot of play in Champions League, but does have some potential in the future, especially with these colorless attacks that could be hovering around the format, especially for stuff that doesn't get KO'd more often than not in a uh, one hit KO style fashion. If your opponent has to do multiple hits, um, because again, like you said, the Greninja, you can chain these Greninja attacks essentially for free if you've got two of these on the Greninja. Yeah. Um, you just discard two boomerangs, they come right back, and uh, you can focus your other attachments onto you know your bench Frokies or other attackers that you may have in the deck. So in my opinion, this is a really, really cool energy. I like this energy. It's not the best energy, but it, it's just a really cool one overall. Now, the last A spec uh, card here is the energy. It is legacy energy. Mm -hmm. um, it provides every type of energy, um, but only provides one. So it's a rainbow energy. Uh, and once per game, if the Pokemon this card is attached to is knocked out by damage from an attack from your opponent's Pokemon, your opponent takes one fewer prize card. So, uh, Jake, there's something about that sentence, though, that was really interesting that you uh, that I think you wanted to point out. It's really nice because you can use this as a rainbow energy all the time, right? If you use something like Roseanne's backup to be able to continuously put this back into your hand and on your Pokemon from the discard pile, but you cannot chain the uh, fewer prize card mechanic part of this card, similar to like a Sheninja, right? The Sheninja from, I think it was Lost Thunder being able to constantly, uh, prevent your opponent yeah. from taking prize cards this is a once per game mechanic so like a two-part mechanic card but only one of them happens one time in the game so really really interesting in my opinion definitely a nerf right um yeah. to the fewer prize card mechanic they don't want these uh dolly <laughs> control decks running rampant and i think for good reason as well but could just be something that's really interesting in my mind with like Ogre Pond, right? Yeah. With your Ogre Pond, you have really squishy Pokemon, right? Only 210 HP, as we've talked about previously, and ones that oftentimes require many different energies, yeah. right? And especially if you're playing that item card that allows you to switch the Ogre Ponds, they all at least require one specific type of energy, so you can play a legacy energy to kind of make the prize mapping a little bit awkward, especially with Ogre Pond, right? Only taking one prize off of an Ogre Pond still forces your opponent to take three Ogre Pond knockouts extra off of that to be able to get enough prizes to win the game. So yeah. effectively forcing a three KO game plan to a four KO game plan, which elongates the game and could be the turn that you need in order to uh, get ahead in a specific matchup or something. So really cool energy overall. I, I kind of wish it was more than once per game, but also I'm <laughs> like, so I get broken. it. Yeah. I like, yeah. I get it overall. Yeah. It's a, it's a good energy. It encourages people to play this in two prize decks, right? Mm -hmm. To be like, to your exact, exactly your point, like fix some prize mapping late in the game. But it's not good enough to to have a control deck be, oh, so you're telling me they can never take a prize. I'm in. Mm -hmm. I'm on board. Let's go. <laughs> it's definitely uh, it's it's reminiscent <laughs> of some old things, but I, I get but it. Fixed. I get it's it. Fixed. Yeah, it's fixed. But that's going to be all the cards in this episode of the Metapod podcast. The longest. I mean, I haven't fact checked this, oh. but I think it's the longest episode that we've ever had. Um, very close close yeah it's like a two and a half hour episode so those of you that have been mentioning in comments reviews discord that uh you wish the episodes were longer shout outs to you this one's for you uh it's a good one and again next week we're going to talk about uh we're going to talk about more episode or more decks 
coming in this upcoming format after you see the pre-releases and some of the cards in action at your local pre-releases and again i'm going to continue pumping the discord we have a discord server that you can hang out with it's been a lot of fun so far people posting their polls asking questions yep. you know deck list chats there's also like meetup groups for the different events if you're going and you're hoping you know maybe you're going alone and maybe you want to meet uh some friends and stuff like that or something i have been um, that person i went to hartford all by my yes. lonesome and i met some cool people there it was great so exactly like i went to naic last year and uh met some fans i gave out uh some metapod mats and some metapod stuff um at that event so being able to just you know connect with the community in a sense even if it's just at a casual level just through these servers so pop in say hi the links are in the description in the show notes below but that's going to be all for the podcast that revolves around the evolving meta i'm jake that's sean and uh see you next week